WXOS, WXOS HD1 East St. Louis, 101 ESPN is driven by Auto Centers Nissan, home of the lifetime warranty and 30 day return. Live from the Car Shield Studio, this is the opening drive on 101 ESPN. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the opening drive on opening day on 101 <laughs> ESPN in St. Louis. It's 7 o'clock. Your time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler. Brooke Grimsley is here. Danny Mack is here. I'm Randy Carricker, and Happy New Year, everybody. How are we doing? Happy opening day, everyone. I'm doing great because it's opening day. Happy opening day. Away we go. Cards and Doyers this afternoon, 310 start on Bally, and Miles Michaelis will pitch, and he doesn't care what we think, and he's going to go against... Tyler made of glass now for the uh, the L.A. Dodgers. Are you trying to do something there so maybe yeah, well, he doesn't I, have that great of a season? I think he's got a career high of 131 innings pitched, so I think I'm pretty safe in saying that uh, he is not the iron horse. Mm. <laughs> but their bullpen is really good. And their lineup really good. is really good. And he's really good. He and might go five and a third, five and two thirds hitless innings. He could. I mean, that's how good they are. And they just get richer because they keep signing players to contracts that are ridiculous that other teams would look at. And the rich get richer. Let's start with that. Will Smith, their 29-year-old catcher, yesterday signs a 10-year $140 million contract extension. By today's standards, a bargain. At an average of 14 million a year, but a catcher to age 39? With a guy that has some injury history with yeah. concussions, had the rib injury last year. He's a he's a hell of a player. Might but be the best catcher in the league. He he is underrated because of just what he does behind the plate and at the plate. And I know your guy, our guy, Ted Simmons, loves him. He does. So yeah, I mean the rich get richer, and if they want to sign a player and keep him in the terms uh, long fold or for the in the fold long term, I should say, they'll be able to do that, and they have just deep pockets, and they can do what they want. And that's how they probably feel about it. So the rest of us are saying wow, that contract is going to look really bad possibly towards the end. But for them, they're like, well, just another, another little drop yeah, in they, the hand for them. Uh, I, I don't think that they have uh, come up with the concept of uh, a budget yet because they're... It's they're, like an endless bucket. It, it is. It's amazing. And they're reaching the point now. They're going to, within a couple of years, where for every dollar they spend over $237 million, they're going to have to spend a dollar to pay into the luxury tax. And that's one of the things I think that happened with the Cardinals and Montgomery to an extent. They're just not going to go over that no. threshold. And yeah. that's something to think about as we were talking about it uh, yesterday. They're just probably not going to operate over the threshold and i think that's the way that they look at it yeah interesting piece by the way if you haven't read it on the payrolls of every team in baseball by jeff passon at espn.com and he says the cardinals are shirkers with where they stand with their their payroll that they are essentially quote shirking their responsibility to spend more it's a it's a good piece it really, really? Is. yeah the Cardinals will have Ali Marmol, the first Cardinal manager since 1917, to come back after a 90-loss season. He'll be in the dugout today, contract extension. Well, probably not in hand, but he knows he has it. And he's going to be managing a new center fielder. Victor Scott II is here and ready to rock and roll. They should be. Um, I'm excited about it. He's, uh, I mean, does everything just out of his electric um, the way he runs the bases he creates chaos he plays really good defense i think his back will be just fine um he takes a competitive at bat he's gonna take his walk but at the end of the day this is a an exciting player so there's reason for it here's my thing i hope the cardinals allow him to create chaos on the bases and let him take charge in the outfield, mm -hmm. too. I mean, when you look at right field and what we saw the other night with Jordan Walker and Dylan Carlson having that collision, you're going to be undermanned a little bit in left, depending if it's Burleson or Donovan. So let Victor Scott man center field. You have to at this point. Just let him be who he needs to be. That's what I asked for this season with Victor Scott the second. Just let him be the player, the swag that he brings, the confidence. Just let that continue to build and grow. And it's a pretty young team for Ali Marmol. Yes, Brooke, did you have something to add? Oh, when you said young team, I got a little scared because oh. we heard those comments from Nolan Arenado about having a young clubhouse. Oh. Oh. I don't want it to be overran again. Yeah, we don't want the, the, the clubhouse to be overrun by, by kids. But you do have Jordan Walker and you do have... Alec Burleson, and now you have Victor Scott II, and you have Mason Wynn. You have some youth. 
uh, on on this squad. And Ali was asked if he manages any differently with uh, with such a young squad. And it's a really good blend when you look at the guys like Goldie and Otto, but then you had Carp and Crawford and Mason Wynn's ability and Victor Scott's ability. You kind of draw from them as well. There's a lot of experience on that field and uh, guys that have won. So it, it, it's a good blend. Um, I feel like our staff does a good job of relating to both of the guys that have been around for a while, but also um, your new rookies. So it's, a, it's an exciting group for sure. Yeah, they have a few. <laughs> that's not a bad thing, though. No. I like having a good mix of young players and veteran players. So that's what you want. You want these young kids to come up and at least have others lead by example to show you how to be a pro. How do you become a major leaguer? How do you act on and off the field? How do you play this game? What are you learning as you sit in the dugout? All those things are important, and they certainly have the nucleus for these young players to learn from these guys. There's no doubt. Dan, you've been around the club forever and around, been around winning clubs and clubs that were around 500. Do you think there's anything to be said for winning experience? Because the only guy that the Cardinals have that has won a World Series, I guess you could add Marp to the, and Brandon Crawford. Okay, so you got some guys on the bench in addition to Wilson Contreras that have won. Is there anything to be said for having that experience in the clubhouse? I think it helps. The bottom line is got to have talent. So I'll take young talent. I don't care how good uh, or v the veterans that you have in a clubhouse are. Give me talent, and talent plays. So that would be uh, the number one thing I'd look at, but it doesn't hurt to have that pedigree of having played postseason baseball for sure. And you talked about leading by example. So now you have Matt Carpenter coming into the mix, and whenever I say Matt Carpenter, I know some people say, okay, how much are we going to see him this season? You hope that you wouldn't have to see him too much because then that means that you have your most important players staying healthy. But at the same time, just based off of everything that they've done during the offseason, the moves to add this veteran leadership, maybe that will help alleviate some of the pressure from some of the players like a Nolan Arenado and Paul mm -hmm. Goldschmidt where they have to maybe lead more vocally with these young players. And you have plenty of people to lead by example. You have Brennan Donovan. We talked mm -hmm. about the way that he leads, not only by example, but it seems like he's stepping up vocally as well. I'm interested to see how this whole mixture works out for them. Yeah, there are uh, enough people. I mean, uh, the last two years, Kyle Gibson has been a playoff pitcher in the year before last. He was in the World Series. Lance Lynn obviously has his history with the 2011 and 2013 Cardinals. Uh, Sonny Gray, checking notes, no. But still, you've got a lot of guys that have pitched in the World Series. Well, you got to get there first, though, don't you, Randy? I you mean, do. the Cincinnati yep, Reds don't have a lot of guys. Yeah. The Cubs don't either. No, that's exactly right. That, you know, I mean, it's yeah. you got to find the right mix. Yeah. Just give and, me talent. And, and youthful exuberance is a valuable commodity. And you, you know what? You can always get guys. I, I always go back to uh, BT talking about the 06 World Series when all that young bullpen was, you know, uh, they, they get to postseason and all the uh, players that have been there two years before that had the postseason race by go to all the kids and say, hey, just take this in and let it breathe and make sure that you savor this and slow it down. Because la two years ago, when we lost to the Red Sox, it went so fast. So just slow it down. And that's where people like Marp and Lynn and Brandon Crawford can be a real benefit. Like Jason Isringhausen was a big part of that, yep. too, by the way, uh, especially with Wayno. Just having those guys... <laughs> Wayno says the best piece of advice he ever got was when Jason Isringhausen told him to breathe. Right. Right. If things are going crazy, <laughs> just step off the rubber and breathe. And that's so, an important thing to know. So there's something to it. Yeah. yeah I, I agree. I, I just give me really talented players. And if you can mix in the, the fact that some of these older guys have been to postseason play or at least you know, have a chance to understand what it's like to be in the playoffs, that, that certainly does help. I'm just very curious about how everybody feels. And you can text into the Air Comfort Service text line. That is 314-399-9646, Yo ho! I'm curious how everybody feels going into opening day because you do have all the injuries. We've talked about that. We don't have to rehash every single injury the Cardinals have going in. That seems like a dark cloud. But then you have Victor Scott the second, who has had a fantastic spring training. He will be making his debut does that feel kind of like a little bit of sunshine peeking through those dark oh, clouds right now yeah absolutely oh not the lollipops randy well, I, i'm trying to put a positive out there I with am, victor I, scott the second i'm excited about this because again if allowed to i think he can be a spark plug that is a rare commodity in baseball these days 
I uh, it's opening day. Can we just be happy about opening day? I of am course. very happy about it. You know, it's baseball is here, and yeah, there's some some points of the Cardinals that aren't great, and other teams have that as well. But it's the excitement of opening day, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. A couple of openers were rained out and will be played tomorrow at City Field in New York. The Mets were of two two have hosted the Brewers and the Phillies and Braves were supposed to play in Philadelphia. That one has been rained out as well. You have the Angels at the Orioles today. Corbin Burns making his Baltimore debut. Cubs at the World Champion. Rangers, Justin Steele, 16-game winner from last year, going for the Cubbies against Nathan Evaldi for the Rangers, and uh, a pretty full schedule. The Blues, meanwhile, are in action tonight, and we'll have it for you here on 101 ESPN at 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock pregame as they take on Calgary. Uh, Tough loss to Vegas in overtime, and the Blues... I, I know they think they can do it mathematically. The Blues are alive, but it's kind of... Uh, uh, I get the feeling now that they're playing for pride. That's what it feels like at this point. And they should still be yeah. competing. As we talked about, you sh- still should be competing like you are trying to get into the playoffs. But at this point, mathematically, and we love math on this show, love but it, it doesn't seem thing. to be working in their favor at this point. Or my favor. You just go for broke. You got to win. Win every game. You got to win every game. That's the way that you have to approach it. And the Vegas Golden Knights have the Jets, the Wild, Canucks, Coyotes in their next four. And by that time, you probably should have a pretty good idea of where you stand. NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament resumes this evening as well. Sweet, sweet 16 matchups. Clemson against Arizona. It'll be San Diego State against number one seeded UConn. Number four seed Alabama takes on number one North Carolina. That should be a heck of a game. And the Fighting Illini taking on Iowa State. Best offense in the country against the best defense in the country in Iowa State. It is the UConn Invitational. Yes, it is. <laughs> it it's is. the UConn Invitational. That it feels that way, doesn't it? it? They are so good, man, and watching him and I, I think the game though I'm looking forward to the most is the game that you just mentioned Iowa State Illinois should be fun that will be the game of the night for me because one you have a lot of key player there by the way Iowa State has Keyshawn Gilbert who ha- came from Vashon mm-hmm. so if you're looking for a local angle if you're not an Illinois fan then maybe that's the side that you pick but Illinois their offense how in the world do you slow them down at this point Terrence Shannon Jr. looks fantastic right now yeah they're They've got it going now, and he's scoring 30 a game uh, down the stretch and into the in the postseason. So, yeah, he is unstoppable. For me, it's can they defend? And mm-hmm. they had, had issues defending at a lot of times this year. Hell, Moorhead State had them by a point at halftime in the first round. So they can get, the, you know, you can get to them a little bit. It's just a matter, matter of whether they can lock down their defense. And I think it's hard for teams, for whatever reason, to defend the three, to get out to the line and get a hand in somebody's face. That's what Iowa State does. Is yeah. They play defense and they shoot the the three so that'll be an interesting game all right we're off and running here on this friday eve edition of the opening drive on 101 espm brooke dan randy coming up get your text in again 314-399-9646-314-399 yo ho we've got sick of it next on 101 espn the blues play on espn tonight blues and flames pregame at six hot drop at seven shoots he scores This is your exclusive home for Blues Hockey 101 ESPN.
Drive on 101 ESPN. Brought to you by Sumner One. Time for Sick of It here on 101 ESPN. Brooke, Dan, Randy, Bradford Bruns is in for Matthew Rocchio today. Matthew headed out to Vegas this morning. Congratulations to him. I hope he has some fun. I think you'll have a lot of fun this weekend. I think he will. (laughs) Uh, Guys, here's what I'm sick of. I'm sick of the national disdain for our St. Louis Cardinals. We can say bad things about the Cardinals here. We can downgrade the Cardinals here because they're our Cardinals. But MLB Network Radio, MLB Network TV, The Athletic, you can't be downgrading our Cardinals. No, they're our Cardinals. So <laughs> it feels uh, personal when it they do that, does, doesn't it? and I'm sick of it. Is it a realistic view at the Cardinals, though? I think there's some people around the nation. I was listening to, to, listening to MLB Network Radio yesterday, and I think a lot of it is personal with Mo. I really do. Uh, now, uh, among a lot of fans, it is too. But I don't think the Cardinals are as bad as they're being portrayed in the media. People, and I know there's a lot of people uh, that on on the social medias that think they're going to be a 70 or 71 win team again this year. I don't. I don't see it. I, I just don't. I don't think that they will be that either. And I'm not trying to put on, you know, the rosy tinted glasses. Cardinal but I really, red tinted glasses. Oh, the cardinal red tinted glasses. Yeah. There you go. And I'm not carrying anybody's water before somebody texts that in at the same time, too. But what were some of the comments that you were hearing that made you believe that? So they were doing a preview for every division. And Xavier Scruggs was, he, he was, he's a level-headed guy. We got to yeah. get Xavier on. Uh and he was fine, but people from the other division or the hosts of the show, and it was Chris Jimenez and I think Jim Duquette, and they were saying, uh, in, in particular, I think it was Jimenez says, the, the Cardinals just aren't good. They they don't really have anything that uh, makes me think that they have a chance. And I, I look around, they've got some pretty good talent on this team, and if you compare it to the rest of the division, they should absolutely be competitive. And Xavier Scruggs said that he thinks they're going to win the division, but I think it was Jimenez and Duquette specifically that's, that were saying they aren't good and I, I would I would push back against that I, th- I think they're at least average I think they're an 81 82 win team yeah I think they're 500 maybe give or take a game yeah. above or below um, I think it's part of like the San Antonio Spurs curse if you will for them in their fan base where you're so good for so long people are willing and ready to knock you down mm-hmm. and the Cardinals have been that way in baseball and I think that's how they're perceived nationally at times people are ready to knock you down man. yeah they are Right. Exactly. I think that's what's happening. Well, guys, this is what I'm sick of. I know that we were just talking about Rockio in Vegas. I want to keep it in Vegas for a second because I am tired of betting scandals with athletes. Just stay away from it. What are you doing? You know that you're going to get caught. You know that it's going to be found out eventually. Just stop it. The risk is never worth the reward, and it's just not worth it whatsoever. Can we not have this happen anymore? I think that with wealthy men in their 20s, it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. And that's my concern at this point because it's taking away from it's every single sport is impacted. We mm-hmm. talked about John Tay Porter the other day. That was absolutely wild. How did he not realize he was going to get caught? It was so obvious. And now anytime something happens, like you had Draymond Green mm-hmm. ejected last night and everybody's like, okay, everybody go look at the prop bets. Yeah. Go see what's going on there. So I just, I wish that we could get away from some of the betting scandals. I, the Otani thing, I don't see going away. No. You know, the John Tay Porter thing, I could see going away just because he's not Otani. He's not a major player, and that just kind of gets swept under the rug. But when you're the face of a sport, I just don't see that going away. Michael Porter Jr., by the way, talked about his brother last night and said of gambling in sports, it's part of the game now. I think it's obviously a dangerous habit. It's a dangerous vice for people. You know, the love of money is the root of all evil. So I think that even though it is a thing, we as players have to accept that. We get paid a lot of money to play this game. And I know these people, these fans, they want to make some money as well. It's definitely something that has kind of taken over the sporting world. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. But he did say that as they're sitting on the bench right behind them, people are talking. 
talking about prop bets and really? saying, hey, I need you to score this many or I need you to score under this many. So the players are made aware of it while they're playing the game. And Jason Tatum even had a comment the other day about, I guess I feel bad if, you know, people lose money because of me. So it is a factor into it. And gambling is now a big part of our culture when it's legalized in a lot of different places. But for the athletes, I maybe there is an example and maybe it's more than we know some of the stories. And that's why there's just certain stories that trickle out that get caught. But at the same time, you just can't do it if you're an athlete. And I just don't want to continue to see these scandals get worse with, with athletes. Major League Baseball, by the way, will not release lineups until they've been released privately to Vegas. Oh. Right? To Vegas. Yeah, wow. that doesn't happen until it goes to Vegas. Did you have some, Bradford? I am ready to dig into a number of different Cardinals-centric sick of it's actually from the audience. They are hot. They are streaming through. Yeah. Does Dan get to play? Yeah. Oh, I'll play on this one. Just very quickly going back to college basketball. So you had Clemson, Arizona, San Diego State, UConn, Alabama, UNC, Illinois, Iowa State. I'm sick of not having some at least Cinderella's still alive in yeah. the NCAA tournament. That's what makes it so much fun. I miss seeing Oakland do what they did against mm -hmm. Kentucky or FAU a few years ago. San Diego State was not a blue blood what they did a year ago and getting to the Final Four. So I enjoy that part of the NCAA tournament, and it seems like we really don't have that here in 2024. Do we have any? Do not we really. That's the thing is that I don't think that you have anybody you could consider a Cinderella at this point. No, it's kind of a bummer. Oakland could have been that team. Yeah. But hey, Goki, yeah. he did get an NIL deal. Did you see that with Buffalo oh, Wild did he Wings? Really? So that's just a nice little Buffalo. story. So yep. he was a DoorDash and Uber driver Love for it. a little bit. And now he has that deal with Buffalo Wild Wings. All right, the, 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 the very angry Bradford Bruns. <laughs> <laughs> we have a fashion faux pas, actually, to lead us off, guys. From the 636, I'm sick of the Cardinals not wearing the Navy hats on the road. They look good, period. Just do it already. Thank you, Tim McKernan, for checking in. Yeah, no shit. that. Yeah, Same thanks for you. listening. I'll put a lie on that hill. He will, yeah. So I, I do like, I, as a matter of fact, I just bought a new Navy Cardinal cap. I prefer that, but it's not something that I'm sick of. I, I can live without it. It takes me an inning to get used to the red caps again. Yeah, I, I, so Tim is very big on this. Oh, yeah. Is oh, this, oh, okay, I've missed this rant. Yeah. I need to hear this rant today, okay. I feel like. I think we're going to hear more about the uniforms tomorrow than we've heard all during spring training. This will be yeah. folks mm -hmm. their first time to see the lettering on the back mm -hmm. and just how it looks and it does not look good. And people are going to go nuts across the country with I this. Agree. I agree. Bradford. <laughs> Sick of it from the 618. I'm sick of people, guys, crowning teams as the best, even before a season starts. How often do the paper tigers actually come out on top at season's end? Oh, you're not going to like some of our segments later then. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Looking ahead. But all, all you have to do is look at recent history, right? The Yankees, last time they were in the World Series was 2009. That's 15 years ago now that the Yankees were last in a World Series. The Dodgers have not won a full season World Series since 1988 so yeah it, and those two teams are picked by many people every single year it's hard to win every single year even if you spend the most money i agree with the texture but i would say that's what makes this so much fun yeah. is that you come in with predictions you, you have different teams that you follow that you love and then all of a sudden the season starts injuries happen and players emerge and that's what makes the season so beautiful this one is bound to be just a bit divisive from the 314. I'm sick of celebrity news being shoved in our faces. Who, fill in the expletive, cares? This is up uh, Randy's alley. Well, I, <laughs> number one, you brought to my attention, Brooke and Matthew is here, that uh, Larsa and uh, and Marcus are Dunskis. They are Dunskis, and it was pretty devastating. I didn't know if you were going to make it the Sad. remainder of the show, honestly, yeah. Randy, because but, that was the epitome of true love right there. It really was, and I can't imagine what would cause those two lovebirds to part because it seemed like the perfect relationship to me at the outset. And I just don't know why Larsa Pippen, Scotty's ex-wife, and Marcus Jordan, the son of Michael, I don't know why it wouldn't work out. <laughs> there's, there's no way that there was any issues behind the scenes. As a guy that uh, dominates trivia, which you do, mm -hmm. Randy, yeah. uh, I find it incredibly interesting how much you follow the social scene, if you will. Well, it's important to me, Dan, and especially from a sports perspective. I need these people to... Uh, you know, I, I need these people to be comfortable in their own skin. And I thought Larsa had kind of found herself. Okay. <laughs> 
Like they're oh, she, she had Awful. moved. She moved beyond Malik Beasley, and uh, you know, she, and Scotty obviously. Mm-hmm. And uh, she, I thought she was doing well. She's got to be crushed this morning. Now I do get what this person is saying because they're talking about celebrity news in general. But how do you get away from any of it anymore? It's all over social media. Everybody's on social media. You have it on your phone. It's on the news. How is there anybody who can stay away from? celebrity news. No, because they mesh. I mean, we, we had Kim Kardashian and Reggie Bush and Kim Kardashian and, well, how about any Kardashian with athletes? And then you have, how can you stay away from the NFL team that is the Super Bowl champions that are on TV all the time and the world's biggest global superstar? How can you stay away from it? You can't. No. It's in your face every Sunday. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I did too. And I by the end, I was great. sick of it. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, uh, did you see that uh, those two were, were macking on each other oh. in the water in the Bahamas? Uh-oh. Is that right? Those Randy really is on top of it. I'm oh, telling yeah. you. Yeah, Tails wearing her uh, her yellow bikini and Trav wearing his, uh, his uh, flowery swimsuit. Yeah, Mackie, they, and they eh? look like they're just having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> One more blissfully, and I think we can all relate to this. When I am sick of 10 cars in a row traveling in the speed limit on that far left-hand side, just move to the middle. Hashtag my current situation. So that bothers me too, but here's the thing. The old adage, and I think police officers will weigh in here, um, nine is fine, 10 you're mine. So if I'm... On a highway where it's 60 miles an hour for the speed limit, I set my uh, my cruise control at 69 miles an hour. And without fail, I will have somebody that's up my butt tailgating me. Are you doing it in the left lane, Randy? Yeah, but 69 miles an hour. I'm, I'm going nine miles over the speed limit. But maybe do it in not the left lane and the other, just well, some of the other lanes. Just so, because so, it's more of a passing lane or emergency lane. That also drives me nuts when I see it all the time where people don't move over for emergency vehicles. Do you ever the see lane. the left lane empty? No. There you sadly go. Sadly not. No. Because I think it's, it's not. just not utilized properly sometimes. Right. But I, I just, uh, you know, some, if I'm on a highway and uh, I'm going somewhere like from between St. Louis and Chicago, I'll drive 85, 88 miles, 89 miles an hour. It just, it drives me crazy that, you know, people just can't be courteous. You do it all the way in the left lane? I, yeah, well, I, no. <laughs> That's what it's, I'm saying. It's, no. it's more about like the left lane is just kind of using that to Yeah, but get there's a difference people. between going 60 in the left lane and going what the cops will give you oh, in the left yeah, lane. Oh, yeah, 100%. Because if you do have radar somewhere, right, there, and you're going 74, then all of a sudden Brooke's slamming her. her you got your new so mobile on the run cup. I do. Yeah, so proud of you. for opening day. I just thought yeah. it would be really cute. Everybody can look at it right now. Yeah, cool. on YouTube. I just, love uh, the Angry Bird, too. Oh, it's great. That is our Air Alliance Team studio cam. Just go on YouTube. That that, uh, that picture of the celebrities in the on the beach. Oh, that's uh, yeah. It's kind of a hassle to do that. Okay, <laughs> I just wanted Taylor, to take a look. Taylor Swift and, and Travis Kelsey. All you need to do is go to TMZ.com. Okay, and uh, they they kind of like it at TMZ. All right, so there you have it. Going Thanks for your text. Right now. We do appreciate it. Coming up next, Greg Amsinger, MLB Network on opening day on 101 ESPN. of March continues this week on 101 ESPN with Sweet 16 and Elite 8 action. March Mayhem on 101 ESPN is courtesy of Salika Heating and Cooling, your independent American standard heating and air conditioning dealer. See our entire March Madness schedule now at 101ESPN.com. I'm a good person. I pay my taxes and then right when I get my refund check, bam. Car dealers want it for a down payment. Well, not this year. All you need is 29 bucks at Frank Lita Mitsubishi in the automotive outlet in Bridgeton. Every vehicle, just $29 down. Get huge discounts on all remaining 2023s and acres of pre-owned. But I'm worried about my credit. Do you have a job? Yes. Got $29? Yes. That's all you need at Frank.
This is Tyler Tucker, and today is Blues Game Day on 101 ESPN. Blues Game Day is presented by SSM Health Orthopedics, your nationally recognized team for knee and shoulder pain relief. Live from the Car Shield Studio, this is the opening drive on 101 ESPN. Brooke, Dan, and Randy, coming up at 845, we're going to give you our predictions for the divisions and our world champions this year. Greg Amzinger, the lead anchor for MLB Network, joins us now. Of course, Greg is a native of St. Louis and a product of the Lindenwood University. Good morning, sir, and Happy New Year. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm executing my long-term master plan, which started about, I think, five years ago. First time I brought it up to Adam Wainwright, that you'll be sitting next to me someday, Wayno. And tonight will be Adam Wainwright's first MLB tonight with me and Harold Reynolds after the Cardinals Dodgers game. So I'm very fired up for the MLB Network debut of Adam Wainwright. And let me, by the way, uh, speaking of Harold Reynolds, he did such a good job with Betts, Freeman, and Otani. Kudos to him and uh, MLB Network. And last night, you and uh, and he uh, sat and introduced and uh, analyzed the interview with those guys. But he did a magnificent job. That was really a fun interview. Oh, well, thank you. And, and we, we taped that show and our reaction to the interview before the news broke of Otani. So there were little bits of me interjecting my head into that interview where I said, hey, just a reminder, all of this went down before the news broke of ePay and the $4.5 million and all of that stuff. So uh, we, we got we got criticized because people just didn't know that the timing of, of taping the interview. People think everything happens in real time, but that's not exactly how it works. So it was before all of that, and uh, that's not Harold Reynolds' fault that he did an interview with three superstars before massive news broke. Yep. And a, a pro tip for viewers, if it says on the upper left of the screen, recorded March 11th, that means it was <laughs> recorded March 11th. They don't pay attention to that. <laughs> no one's looking at that. Come on, Randy. <laughs> All right. Uh, who do you have winning the NL Central, Greg? I've got the Cardinals winning the NL Central, and I, I, I am bullish about it. And when people push back on the Cardinals winning the NL Central, I go, okay, so name the team that's going to win over that. Name the team that's ready to, to make that leap and win over 90 games. Is it the Cincinnati Reds? If not the Cardinals, it would be the Reds for me. The McLean injury is a massively important injury to them because he's their steady Eddie guy, even though he was a rookie last year. Frankie Montas is going to have to come back into premier form to lead a very young staff that's still going to have hiccups. I love their staff. I think it's going to improve dramatically, but I, I just don't think they're mature enough to begin what I think is going to be a reign of dominance. The Reds are about to become a super team in in the NL Central, but it will not be this year. I do not think the Cubs did enough to fix that bullpen. Hector Neris' stuff has been going backwards. uh, He's in his mid-30s now, and and, and they ran that bullpen into the ground. Uh, They don't have a lot of swing and miss in the rotation. I got a buddy in college that I think throws harder than Kyle Hendricks does right now. So I'm not believing in the Cubs. I think the Brewers took a major step back. I think Devin Williams will be the closer of the Padres in the next month and a half. I'm not kidding. They're going to trade him while his stock is high. And I think the Pirates will be a third-place team, believe it or not. They're going to be improved. Paul Skeens will be in this rotation at some point. Uh, I think they're going to be an improved club. But I get the Cardinals as the club that will win the NL Central. All right. Well, there you go. Happy opening day, Cardinals fans. Now, Greg, I want to ask you about Victor Scott II. A lot happening there. Another injury with Dylan Carlson, which opens the door for Victor Scott II to make his Major League debut today. What is your expectation for Victor Scott II and his role with the Cardinals this season? You know, I got a chance, Brooke, to talk to Randy Flores, the scouting director of the Cardinals, and of all the players that he has he has seen in the system, no one has had a meteoric rise in a short span of time like Victor Scott. The entire organization is blown away by what he's done. And what is that? They give young players things to work on. They call it their homework. And it's all real-time stuff that they can actually see from their offices, wherever they are, the front office, how they're improving. And no one worked harder in the offseason on their homework than Victor Scott. He has improved dramatically. And look, it makes sense as to why they wouldn't want to break camp with him for years of control. Now that clock has started good luck Dylan Carlson finding spot in center field when you come back I think this kid's going to take the job he's not going to give it away Tommy Edmonds eventually going to come back but well, when you got a kid that is this dynamic and looks this confident at the plate and can disrupt so much on the bases I, I, I'm sorry I, I don't see the Cardinals going backwards this is his gig 
if he plays to the level he's been playing recently. He knows that. The Cardinals are letting him recognize the reality of the situation. And I think Victor Scott is a name Cardinal fans are going to have to get used to. With the Cardinals facing the Dodgers, one of the biggest storylines, not just with this series, but nationally, is Otani and his situation. What are you hearing about that and how it may play out here in the first couple of weeks of the regular season? Well, before we had opening day, we have seminars, which all of you know, like before a big season starts, the executives meet with you. And we were uh, pleased to be joined by members of the commissioner's office who just wanted to reiterate to all the broadcasters to not speculate here. There's so much they don't even know. They have an investigation going on. There are countless investigations going on to the details of what took place. What we do know is that there was information given to ESPN that was retracted and uh, uh, two different messages, which leads to the importance of investigations. Uh, what I personally know is that Ipe was Mr. Everything to show Otani, was with him everywhere he went. So no matter what Otani uh, is claiming, I think the emotion, the humanity of this is he, he's not with his best bud who's been with him since he entered the United States and started playing Major League Baseball. So this is going to be a major adjustment period for Shohei Otani. To think it's just an interpreter, it, it, it's far from that. This is a, a very, very close relationship that Shohei had. So that that's all I know personally because I've, I've been around Otani, I've been around Ipe, and they, they come off as brothers and best of friends. That is not an exaggeration. And uh, this is going to be a tough tough adjustment for Shohei. But other than that, all the details surrounding uh, the $4.5 million and who did what and when did they know, we're going to find out all that information when these investigations start to uncover things. Greg, in my lifetime, there have been a lot of compelling teams. The the Mets of the 80s with Strawberry and Gooden and Hernandez and Carter. And then the, the, the Yankees, whether it was the Yankees teams that added Clemens or the 2004 team that added A-Rod. I don't think there's been a team for me before a season as compelling as this year's Dodgers are. I just find them, to, uh, and I know they're going to be great, but I think they're also really interesting off the field. We talk about Otani, but the addition of Yamamoto may be the best uh, three hitters in a row in the history of the sport. I think they're just a really interesting dynamic in L.A. And, and right before opening day, they give a 10-year contract for over $140 million to Will Smith, their mm-hmm. catcher. Like, they, here's 140 for you. Uh, you're right. I, I completely agree. There are so many aspects to this team that they would be the headline for any other normal team. Obviously, a $700 million guy, you can stop there. Uh, moving Mookie Betts to shortstop, <laughs> yeah. that would be a headline if, if it was any other normal team. You went and got a $300 million pitcher who's never thrown a pitch in the United States. He's been rocked every time he's gone to the mound and thrown in spring training. That would be a headline, right? Uh, well, you acquired Tyler Glassdale and you gave him a huge contract extension. He's never thrown over 120 innings in his career. That would be a headline. So they're, they're everywhere. And is Kershaw going to come back? And what is he going to look like when he comes back? Th- this is a... It's funny, you know, the the the, uh, the show on HBO called Showtime with the Lakers, when they look back at, mm-hmm. to me, this is the equivalent, it's the baseball equivalent to Magic with Kareem and James Worthy and all these stars and a rock star um, head coach and all the expectations and the limelight, City of Angels. This is, this is that in baseball. Uh, all of it said, right? The pressure on Dave Roberts to win, man. I'm telling you right now, the Guggenheim group that owns this club, they have put in every drop of resources into the roster, and and, and they better win. They, they better go deep into the playoffs. And, and those expectations can sometimes not be fun. And with everything else, the drama surrounding Otani, uh, the way he operates, which is, is they all agreed to it. He does his own thing. And, and that can ruffle feathers, especially someone like Freddie Freeman. There will be drama. Will they win over 100 games? Probably, but it's not going to be easy. It, it will not. Jordan Montgomery finally landing with a new home, reportedly agreeing to a one-year $25 million deal. Seems like a steal for the Diamondbacks. Why was that the landing spot for him, Greg? Man, you know what, Brooke? The, the, everyone was talking about, wow, this, this stinks for Jordan Montgomery. Wow, this is great for the Diamondbacks. I immediately thought about, wait a minute, that was too steep for the Cardinals? Wait a minute, that was too steep for the Red Sox? Wait a minute, that was too steep for the Yankees? Like, I'm going through all these teams that clearly need starting pitching, and they didn't want to give a two years $52 million 
Because essentially what it's going to be is, you know, if he makes 10 starts, it's going to kick in another year. We got a two-year deal for $50 million. And, I, I look, he's not, he's not Randy Johnson, but he still is a guy that you can trust on a big stage, and he's proven it time after time after time. I, I'm blown away by this, that, that this is the deal that was too steep. This was the deal that won the race for Jordan Montgomery. And I, I just I look around the league going, guys, if, if, if you're a starter short and you look back and you go, we decided 25 million AAV for two years is, is too much. Man, that's that's tough baseball business for me. So I think Jordan Montgomery is now part of one of the top five rotations in baseball. I, they're really good and their expectations should be to push the Dodgers in the NL West. Will they win it? I don't think so. But they're a second-place team, clear-cut. And it's almost like they had to do it after the Giants got Blake Snell. The Giants getting Blake Snell makes the Giants a very sneaky wild-card team because while they won't score a lot of runs, when they, when they get Robbie Ray back, that is a rotation to be, to be dealt with. So I think the Diamondbacks recognize this was an opportunity. They struck, and now – Roll your eyes at any club you want to name that goes into opening day thin and starting pitching because Jordan Montgomery was there to be had and they chose not to pay for him. Is there a team outside the favorites uh, that you're looking at that you think could uh, make some noise this year? The Washington Nationals. I'm a big believer that the Washington Nationals will be vastly improved. I thought Dave Martinez had one of the great managerial performances that that was overlooked last year. Um, He was incredibly loyal to a bunch of young players. And what did that do? You saw them improve day after day after day. And by September, the Nationals were a club you didn't want to play. I, I think Mackenzie Gore is going to take a major step forward. T.J. Abrams is about to become a superstar. I think he's a, he's a 25 to 30 homer shortstop that you got to believe in. Uh, the Juan Yepes move, the former Cardinal, that is sneaky. It's sneaky. Eventually, I think that's going to help them out a, a ton because Dominic Smith had no slug playing over 150 games at first base. I think he hit five home runs. Uh, I love Lane Thomas. I love a lot of the young guys in the minor leagues who are coming. Dylan Cruz is going to be a star in center field for the Washington Nationals. This is an organization that is led by a guy that knows what he's doing, and I think they're going to be the most improved team in the National League. I think they're going to be a playoff team. I won't go that far, but I'm saying they'll have a winning record. Washington Nationals will have a winning record this year. Before I ask my next question, I just want you to know that, in my opinion, you are the most passionate and knowledgeable baseball person in America. (laughs) Wait a minute. As you say that, I, I got a little emotional when I was reading that Bob Euchre at the age of 90 is going to call a home opener for the Milwaukee Brewers. And as Dan knows, when you meet Bob Euchre, that is the absolute Mr. Baseball. And I'm not even kidding. Now, is he all things Brewers? Probably at the stage of his Hall of Fame career. But to sit with a guy that has loved the game that long, who transcended baseball, who Johnny Carson couldn't wait to sit and bring him on the show time after time after time again, he made baseball cooler than it ever was. I, I still think that Bob Euchre, to me, it's, it's Bob Euchre and Jack Bug. And, and you guys remember the days of Camel X when there was like a reel to reel, when there was a rain delay. Mm-hmm. It was an interview that Bob Euchre did in the booth with Jack Bug. And you could play that interview on a loop. And it would get great ratings in St. Louis because it's so funny. It's so good. And just to to see people love the game like that and be able to bring it to life in so many different creative ways, that's the stuff I try to think about on opening day. It's not just for the hardcore guys that love the game since they were eight. It's the new fans that are trying to realize, wait a minute, baseball? Baseball's for me. I'm into this. This is cool. So to me, it's Jack Buck and Bob Euchre. They're the gold standard of what baseball, being Mr. Baseball is all about. All right, Greg, last year on opening day, you told us that you were picking the Tampa Bay Rays, and Rays looked like they were going to do it, and then October happens, right? And, and Texas winds up doing what they did. But I want you to give us your World Series teams for 2024. It is the Baltimore Orioles against the Philadelphia Phillies. Ooh. And home field advantage will reign supreme. And that crowd, that scene is unlike anything in baseball right now. And you know how much I love St. Louis. You go to a game at the bank, and it is bouncing. I have the Philadelphia Phillies winning the World Series in 2024. All right, so we're uh, we're 1983 all over again? 
Yes, yes. Uh, Corbin Burns is the opening day starter today for the Baltimore Orioles against the Angels. Tune in because that is the acquisition that will win the Baltimore Orioles a pennant. They did what the Reds chose not to do. And the Reds were a starter away from being the best in the Central. A clean-cut, Dylan Cease, Corbin Burns type. They chose not to do it. That's why I'm going with the Cardinals. But I think the Orioles are the team to beat. And Greg, Harold, and Wayno after the Cards and Dodgers tonight on MLE Network, right? Yes, and we're going to do a segment called Ask Uncle Charlie. <laughs> I love it. That'll be great. Hey, have a great time. Have a, have a great season. Thanks so much for the time. We love you, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. You guys the best. Happy opening day, everyone. Same to you, Greg. Greg Amsinger, MLB Network. Watch he and Adam Wainwright and Harold Reynolds after the Cards and Dodgers today. Uh, you'll see that on Bally here, but then you flip on over to MLB Network and watch Adam Wainwright's analysis of this game. That'll be really exciting to see. He's going to do a great job this season. It'll be terrific. Coming up, we've got Take It or Leave It. Send your text to the Air Comfort Service text line, 314-399-9646, 314-399-YOHO. Bradford's in. He wants to do it. He did, but I'm he... enthusiastic about it. Yo-ho. Yo-ho. There we go. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> you got it. The only next on 101 ESPN. From the opening drive, the balloon party, BK and Ferrario, to the fast lane and more. If you missed anything on 101 ESPN today, get caught up with all the shows and 101 podcasts at 101ESPN.com or on your 101 mobile app. Driven by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. In today's fast-paced world of digital marketing, making meaningful connections with your audience can be a daunting challenge for any business. But what if there was a place where connections aren't just made, but nurtured for growth? Enter 2060 Digital, our sister company backed by a 100-year-old media empire and just like 101 ESPN. If you're a business owner or marketer seeking more strategic ways to reach and engage customers, look no further than 2060 Digital. With 12 years of expertise, 2060 specializes in simplifying the complexities of digital marketing. Our team demystifies the process by transforming it from a challenge into an opportunity for your business. Whether it's enhancing your brand's online presence, optimizing digital campaigns, or increasing customer engagement, 2060 is here to propel your business forward. Think your business has room to grow? Let us prove it to you. Visit 101ESPN.com slash 2060 digital to request a complimentary digital audit today.
long, ESPN is your home for Blues hockey. Every month during the season, you can check out either the 101 mobile app or 101ESPN.com for your chance to get entered to win for a pair of tickets to an upcoming Blues home game at Enterprise Center. New winners picked every month throughout the season for free tickets to see the Blues in action, courtesy of 101 ESPN. Get entered to win now online at 101ESPN.com or on your 101 mobile app. 101 ESPN Sports Center. Cards in Cali to kick off 2024. Good morning. I'm Bradford Bruns with your Sports Center update driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. In under eight hours, the Redbirds take the field West Coast style for opening day. The Dodgers host Miles Michaelis and company beginning at 3.10 p.m. Michaelis faces an L.A. lineup that already pounded Padres pitching last week, courtesy of MLB's Soul Series. Tyler Glass now, meanwhile, nabs the start for the host club. Elsewhere around the bigs, Corbin Burns makes his ball more debut against the Angels. The Cubs visit Texas. Milwaukee and the Mets plus Atlanta and Philly have been washed out. Pucks, the Blues battle Calgary shortly after 7 on 101 ESPN. St. Louis currently sits six points behind Vegas for the final wild card spot out west. This sports center update was driven by Johnny Londoff. Find new roads and shop 24-7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? This is the opening drive on 101 ESPN. Brought to you by Sumner One. It's time for Take It or Leave It. I want to say something. I'm going to put it out there. If you like it, you can take it. If you don't, send it right back. Get your text in to 314-399-9646. And give us your Take It or Leave It. Brought to you by Gloria Lou Realty. Visit GloriaHasTheBuyers.com and start packing. That's my final offer. Take it or leave it. All right, time for Tioli here on 101 ESPN. Take it or leave it, kids. We did sick of it earlier. You're sick of the uh, Warriors' dream on green being ejected from pro basketball games. Took all of, uh, what, five minutes last yeah. night? Yeah, got first player to ever be thrown out in the first quarter twice in a season. It's amazing. <laughs> what and was that even He had been about? on his best behavior, too. And he missed 12 games yeah. uh, trying to go through the anger management. He just can't handle it. At so this he, point, he pulled aside. You yeah. were asking what happened. So he pulled aside the ref. He was upset at, at some of the calls that were going against him and then some of the, the physicality of the plays. And then all of a sudden, it was um, the three-point shooter, Steph Curry, going wild. And he said, went back to the ref and got in his face about it and then got ejected. And mm-hmm. That was it. And so two of them, adios, he's kicked out of the game. I was meaning yeah. it more in the way of, like, what is happening with him? Because at this point, oh. you know that everybody's watching you. And you saw that. You saw Steph's reaction. It just looks absolutely terrible on his part. Yeah, it really is. What uh, else can you do about it? I don't. You've done everything you can. Anger I mean, management. Missed, you've done everything you he can. He missed 12 games with anger management classes. And then it's, he does the commercial where he kind of mocks it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't. I, if you're the NBA, if you're Adam Silver, I don't know what you do. By the way, another one I was going to do, and it, I, I didn't, but Charleston's Pat Kelsey gets the Louisville job. Florida Atlantic hired a coach. So it looks like SLU is going to be able to land on their coach, getting the uh, the head coach from Indiana State. Josh Schertz. Yeah. I got to keep that name in mind. I, I know all the other guys. I was Josh, looking at Josh you. I could Schertz. see you were kind yeah. of scramble a little bit. Yeah. 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 Fill in the did. blank. I appreciate yep. it. <laughs> take it or leave it, guys. I'm going to stay on Cardinals opening day for my take it or leave it. There will be three, three Cardinals starters that post an ERA below four or this season. Uh, Brooke, I'm going to have to leave that. I'm going to have to leave that as well. No, come on, guys. You don't believe it? Well, I'm, I'm just looking at recent history, <laughs> right? Last year, I think uh, Lynn was 5.73. Yeah. Uh, Gibson. Gibson was 4.73. Michaelis was under four, though, last year, wasn't Steven he? Steven Matz, technically, mm-hmm. even though he was... Not long yeah. for the thing. And then, uh, boy, it's hard to imagine that Sonny Gray can... Well, maybe he'll come back and be healthy. I don't know. But then the, uh, the the big question is, what is Zach Thompson going to be? Yeah, and how long will he be there, too? Yeah. That's the other part. Is is he going to be a guy that stays in, um, in that rotation? Something I'll be watching with him is velocity. It's been down a little bit in spring training. I was looking at some of the numbers. So something to keep in mind is he makes, what, the second day start for the Cardinals tomorrow. Uh, take it or leave it. After 13 seasons with the Giants, two-time World Series champ, 
three-time All-Star, four-time Gold Glover. Brandon Crawford will receive the loudest boo of any day today in the introductions oh. of, <laughs> of the players. Oh, great call. Totally take it. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to take that. A They're giant be for all life. Over them. Yeah, we're all giants. <laughs> That's yeah. right. That's so a good that'll call. be fun. That'll good be call. fun to see. Fortuitous timing there, Dan. Take it or leave it. No matter how well Victor Scott plays, the Cardinals will not eat one Brandon Crawford's contract at any point this season. Oh, totally take it. Yeah, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take it. Yeah, for sure. I I would. uh, 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 What happens if Mason Wynn goes down? Yeah. You've got to have a shortstop, I think. That's important. Yeah. Tommy Edmond comes back. You're thinking, you know, what do you do then when you got Lars Newpar? But amazingly, guys come up with sore hamstrings and Mm -hmm. things happened. And I'm sure when he came to St. Louis, there was a handshake agreement that, look, we're signing you not just for two weeks or for a month. You're going to be here. You know, we we, we wouldn't do you like that. We're going to make sure that you're here all year. And I would think that Tommy Edmond... We're looking at a month after he is cleared. He'll he'll spend the entire rehab stint down in the minors, and he may not be cleared for several weeks. So it's going to be a long time before we see Tommy Edmond. You think June 1st? I think that's a possibility. I yeah. do too. Wow. He hasn't picked up a bat. Right. Yeah. The 816 Kansas City weighing in as the Royals prepare to send, I think it's Cole Reagans to the hill today. Take for that what it's worth. Take it or leave it. Monty was one of the problem pitchers for Contreras, and that resulted in him not returning more than anything else. I'm going to leave that. I think Scott Boris probably had more to do with it, with it than anything else. I do, too. I, and Greg makes some interesting points. I mean, he could have been had by a lot of teams, mm-hmm. a lot of teams, including the Cardinals, if they wanted to go over the tax threshold. But there were a lot of teams that needed a lefty and needed a front-end starter and did not say that we're going to spend the money to go get him. So to mm-hmm. your point, it's Scott Boris. Yeah, and Rodriguez, obviously, that was a new injury for the Diamondbacks. So I think that was a big part of the Diamondbacks landing, yeah. Monty. Tioli, the Cards win exactly 84 games to clinch the Central and on the final day of the campaign. Ooh. Exactly. Ooh, I like this. Okay, there's a lot of detail here, and I'm going to go with, I'm going to take it. Yeah, that's fun. I'm going to take it for Cardinals opening day. Yeah. Sunshine and lollipops. Sun- I'm here Sun- for it. Let's see who they play on the last day of the season, shall we? I have no idea. But Cardinals uh, final eight series in September, by the way, against seven teams that did not make the playoffs a year ago. Oh, there we go. So, so we are uh, rough start. Maybe a better finish. Let's see, May, June. What comes after June? July? It does. Tell me it's a central matchup, please. Uh, It is the end of the season in October this year, and it is against, oh, at San Francisco. Mm. Both teams could be in it at that point, too. Yeah, that'll be a fun one. Yeah. Then you have the Rockies before that. Should be W's, three W's. You would think, especially at that point in the season. Mm -hmm. The the old adage that uh, Tommy Lasorda used to use, you're going to win 60, you're going to lose 60, it's the other 40 that matter. I don't think that applies to the Rockies. I don't think they're going to win 60. (laughs) By the way, Fangraphs or his baseball prospectus, I mentioned this yesterday, they have the NL Central all within six games, every team within six games. That's incredible. Yeah. And it could happen. I, I could definitely see it. Thank you, Bradford. Thank you, guys. And thank you very much for your texts. We do appreciate it. Coming up... Who are the Cardinal stars going to be within their own team this year? That's next on 101 ESPN. Congratulations to Cindy Nelson of Pacific, Missouri. She was named our 101 ESPN Blues Fan of the Week. Submit your pick now at 101ESPN.com to be the next Fan of the Week. Taking home Blues tickets and a $50 Buffalo Wild Wings gift card. 101 ESPN's Blues Fan of the Week is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Official member of This Bar Bleeds Blue. Presented by Bud Light.
St. Louis gets its sports. WXOS, WXOS, HD1, East St. Louis, 101, ESPN. Live from the Car Shield Studio, this is the opening drive on 101 ESPN. Six in St. Louis. Time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler. Brooke, Dan, and Randy. The Cardinals open up against the Dodgers today, 310 on Bally. And then the Blues in action tonight here on 101 ESPN, as Bradford told you. They'll take on the Flames at 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock pregame with Alex Ferrario and Joe Vitale. Okay, uh, what are the Cardinals going to do this year individually? We're going to give you our Cardinal Award winners, and we're going to give you the opportunity to know who they are before the season even starts. <laughs> Cardinal MVP, Brooke, who do you got? I have, drum roll please, there we go. This shouldn't come as a shock, but I have Nolan Arenado as my MVP for the Cardinals this year. Good one. I I thought about Arenado for mine. I, I, he he should be by yeah, all rights, exactly. right? He's that's the how guy. you're successful. That's my yeah. whole thought process with it is when he was down, it seemed like the offense in general sputtered as well. So I have him as my MVP for the Cardinals. I went with uh, Brendan Donovan. We forget in his rookie season, only seven Cardinal rookies had a better war than Brendan Donovan in his rookie season. We're talking about Pujols, Stan the Man, Hornsby, Mize, some of the great players. He can play multiple positions, 14th highest walk rate in his rookie season in all of baseball, effective against lefties, so he's going to play all the time. And we also forget he's really good with runners in scoring position at 347, so I'll go with Brendan Donovan. I love that call. I'm going to go with a breakout year for Jordan Walker. I think this is the year that America finds out who Jordan Walker is, and I think he's going to put up big numbers he's durable he's big and i think not only does he become the cardinal mvp but i think he becomes the face of the franchise this year Ooh, i like that one a lot i, I the thing is is seeing ellie de la cruz have you noticed that the media attention surrounding the reds has really jumped so much because of ellie and mm -hmm. all the star power that he has brought i'm seeing interviews with him everywhere all the marketing for major league baseball i'm seeing him being a part of it i want that to be jordan walker here soon i do too okay the bob gibson award winners and cy young didn't pitch enough for the <laughs> Cardinals. Uh, our, we, it's the Bob Gibson Award. Cardinals best pitcher. Who do you got, Brooke? Oh, I have Sonny Gray. Ooh, I feel like no shock forward. there. He will be coming back here soon. And will he be able to get that 2.79 ERA he had last year? Maybe not, but I definitely believe that he will have an ERA below four. I'll go with uh, Ryan Helsley, the bullpen glaring problem a year ago. They blew 41 leads, 26th in strikeouts per nine. He Now, he missed 82 games. He had the forearm strain, pitched in 21 fewer games, 28 fewer innings. But if he's healthy, he's dominant at the back end. So if healthy, he helps what was a concern a year ago, and that's the bullpen. I think that's a, a great call. And if he's healthy, he'll be fine. Brooke I'm with you. I'm going to go with Sonny Gray. He's he, he sticks out like a sore thumb among the Cardinal starting pitchers. So I just put my thumb up for the a sore thumb. Yeah, but more it's like not. a thumbs up. Yeah, on thumbs the, up in the starting rotation. With Sonny. So I'm going with Sonny as well. Okay, uh, next up, Cardinal Rookie of the Year. This might be the most competitive one this year. I think so, but I'm going to go with the guy who is making his major league debut today, and that's going to be Victor Scott the second. He had a fantastic spring training. I think he's going to be able to continue to build off that. Of course, there's going to be some times where he's going to have some learning moments, maybe a little mini slump here or there, but. But I think that with what Greg said, I 100% agree. Victor Scott II is going to make it really hard for the Cardinals to want to send him down this season. I think so, too. That's my rookie of the year for the Cardinals. Infield hit percentage, by the way, something that we don't talk about ever. And I'm just talking about chopping the ball on the ground and beating out infield hits. The Cardinals were 27th in that a year ago. You've got the rule changes in baseball. So the base running changes, his lowest stolen base percentage in pro baseball was at low a it was 81 percent so exciting player he's going to save you some runs with what he does defensively he's going to generate some runs because of his legs on the bases so victor scott is my rookie of the year i'm going to go with another guy who plays great defense and will do well on the bases and has a little bit more experience i'm going to go with mason win as my cardinal rookie of the year that trey turner skill set will be shown he might get off to a rough start like he did at triple a last year but by the end of the season, you will see Mason Wynn ascending and turning into a really good player. That's a pretty nice competition to have, isn't it, with Scott 
and win, both yeah. mm-hmm. being thought about for your rookie of the year. And we aren't even including the relievers like O'Brien or Fernandez and, and those guys. And we're talking about important positions, too. Yeah, right. Center field, shortstop up the middle, very important. Yep. Okay, our next one, comeback player of the year for the Cardinals. Brooke, who do you got? My comeback player of the year is going to be Matt Carpenter because he is back with the Cardinals. It seems like they like to always have the, at least some of that veteran leadership around. And now you have Matt Carpenter here. And I think that he will at least be serviceable this year. I hope that we maybe get a smidge of Yankees Matt Carpenter and not the Padres Matt Carpenter <laughs> that we saw in recent years. I like that idea. So he's my comeback player of the year, too. Um, and it's a comeback from the last time we saw him. So not with the Padres, not with the Yankees, but the last time we saw him in St. Louis. Just a couple of things to keep in mind. He is 17th all-time in games played as a Cardinal. I think that would shock a lot of people. Yeah. He's got the 13th most hum- home runs in Cardinals history. And going into the game today, he's 25 total bases shy of 2,000. Not a bad career for signing for five grand. Not at all. Yeah, no, pretty good. Take that. Guys, I'm going to go with a guy who, in his last full season in the majors, went 14 and 7 with a 3.82, pitched 150 innings. He struck out 144. Then he's been hurt for a couple of years with the Cardinals. I'm going to go with Steven Matz as my Cardinal comeback player of the year. I think that. He's going to be healthy. He's uh, worked hard at being durable this offseason, and I think this is the year that the Cardinals uh, reap some rewards for their investment in Steven Matz. They need to, and I, I think the key would be, Randy, just starts. If he can make you 25 to 30 starts, then you're in a way better position than you've been the last couple of years. And that last year in Toronto, he made 29 starts, so yep. he would be there. Okay, Snarky, Cardinal Manager of the Year. Oh, Randy, there's only one manager right now. So what are you trying to imply there? Just throwing it out there. It's going to be Ollie, isn't it? It's going to be Ollie because he just signed the extension, Randy. Yeah, so I don't is. know what you're trying to imply. I'm just it's trying to be snarky. Day. By the way, <laughs> since 1961, that's when they expanded to 162. Mm-hmm. So 58 seasons, 14 have been below 500, but none of them were back to back. Something to keep in mind as they go forward. So none of them have been back-to-back with under 500 seasons. So the anticipation is they're going to get on track this year. A uh, pretty good run by a franchise. I would say so. Not bad at all. Nope. So, so got to gotta turn it around from a year ago. It's amazing. Growing up in the 70s, and you know, we, we talk about how bad the 70s were. They actually, well, one year they started off 5-20, and 20 and they wound yeah. up 82-80. and 80. It just, it's baseball. It's the way it happens. Yeah. I think, though, the thing that you look at where Ali and, and the Cardinals are going to feel a lot of pressure is that the first six series – or out of their division, 11 series of the first 12 out of their division. And you're talking about the Dodgers, the Padres, Miami, Philly, Arizona. I mean, those are tough teams. Got their hands full, and the Cardinals are obviously decimated by injuries, too. What do you guys predict for the way that they're going to start things out on the road, as you mentioned, against the Dodgers and Padres? What is your prediction with how many wins that they will come away with? For the whole season? No, I'm talking about for oh, this first road for the trip. Seven games. Oh, season. seven games. I, I think they'll probably go one and uh, that would be five. One and or no, two and two and six, two and five. I got two and Seven, five. Yeah, two, win one in each series. If you came home four and three, that's wow. a win. Oh, that's a wow. huge win. That'd yeah. be shocking for yeah. everybody. I, I think. think if you come yeah. home two and five, it's kind of a win. They always say that if you play five hundred on the road, you make up your ground at home. If you play 500 on the road and win two out of three at home you win 95 games exactly so that's what you got to do coming up next year on 101 espn we're going to talk some blues hockey with our buddy bernie federko the hall of famer is next on the opening drive we want your insight and honest opinions on the world of sports use the mic drop feature in the 101 espn app say it and send it to us now in the app store or google play
101 ESPN. Brought to you by Sumner One. Blues and Flames tonight. You'll hear the action here on 101 ESPN at 7 o'clock. Pre-game at 6 with Alex Ferrario and... Uh, Joe Vitale. Joining us now on the Celebrity Line is our friend, the Hall of Famer and Blues Analyst on Valley Sports, Bernie Federko. Bernie, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, Randy. I'm doing great. Thank you. So I, I love to talk to athletes about this, and DeMarco Farr did this show for a long time, and I talked to, to Carrie about it a lot, Carrie Davis over the years, and, and Brad Thompson and Chris Duncan. Players are so competitive, you never realize when you're out of it, do you? It's You guys, if you're mathematically alive, you as athletes are so competitive. Tell me if, if I'm right here. You always think you have a chance. Absolutely, Randy. I mean, uh, you get paid to win. <laughs> that's, I think that's kind of where it is, and I think that you're always brought up that way if you're trying to make it. Uh, in the big leagues, you've got to be willing to sacrifice, and you've got to be able to make sure that you uh, play till the end of the game or end of the buzzer or whatever it is. And, you, yeah, you always believe that you've got a chance. And no matter how – if there's any slim chance at all, you uh, you keep going. And I think that's what this team is, is doing right now. And I think that they're – uh, you know, they're they're showing a, a lot of guts is what they're doing uh, down the stretch. Bernie, really tough news coming out yesterday that Oscar Sunquist will miss the rest of the season after tearing his ACL. How tough is it losing Sonny for the rest of the stretch and for that to happen to him? Well, it's always uh, tough to lose someone that's part of your locker room. I mean, uh, Sonny is, has been a big part of the, this team uh, coming back again. I mean, he was a big part of the team when they won the cup and then coming back and he's always got that smiling face in the locker room and uh, what he brings on the ice too is is something special. I mean, he's he's a guy that uh, uh, does his job, uh, whether it's killing penalties or whatever they ask him. I mean, he's really got his role even got got extended this year, doing a little bit of power play time, getting in front of the net and this and that, and uh, just the way he checks so well. I mean, he's one of those guys that's got great size and and knows what it takes to win. And, and when you lose a guy like that. Um, and especially his personality in the locker room, I think it's going to be very, very much missed. With the young players, Bernie, uh, how important is this stretch of games just to get whether or not they get in the playoffs, but just to get this kind of experience? Yeah, Danny, I think that, you know, the, the, the experience that you get from playing tight games, and I, and I think the kids don't understand how different the game is. I mean, it gets even more competitive when you get into the playoffs but but down the stretch i mean every point is 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 important and every team even if you're not playing against the the teams that are even the playoffs you're playing against guys that are really playing for their jobs playing for the future playing to impress the general manager or the coach so i think it becomes much more competitive so for for the young kids that are in the lineup right now i think this is they're going to be their first taste and uh, I think it's a, even if they don't make the playoffs, I mean, if they do make the playoffs, I mean, what a great run it would be and what a great experience it would be. But even if they don't make the playoffs, uh, I think that you, you, you get that feeling of what it's like to have to turn it up a notch as you get closer to the playoffs. Bernie Federko with us on 101 ESPN. And Bernie, when you played, you were an elite passer. And your game evolved over the years, although at the age of 22, you were a, a 95-point guy. I, I say that because I, I see – not the, from a stylistic standpoint, but from a game standpoint, from a point standpoint, Robert Thomas is an elite passer too. Because you played the style that you did, what's the next thing that Robert Thomas needs to do as he ascends in his career? I think it's just continue to be consistent, Randy. I think that's the most important thing. I mean, I, I think that uh, when you look at this team right now, uh, this team is going to get better. I mean, there's going to be some good young talent that's going to come into, into the team onto the team and and as the, the those, as the team gets better i think his points will get even higher because i mean he's the elite guy and when you surround yourself with better players and there's going to be uh, some real talented skilled players coming in i think that he's going to be kind of the quarterback if you want to call it of what the, what happens so i mean i think he just has to, to to really continue to try to be consistent each and every night i mean he's getting lots of ice time I, i've been very impressed with the way he's uh, played both ends of the of the ice. I mean, I think that's the hardest hardest thing for for a for a center iceman to to, to make sure that you're good defensively, uh, do the right things in in the in the little crunch time areas, especially in the defensive zone. Um, pull your goalie. You got to win a face off. You know, we're even watching win big face offs. The Blues seem to have the puck all the time when they start the overtime because he's winning a big face off. So it's just it's the little things. I mean, you just work on. Uh, I think as a player, you know what your strengths are. 
you know what your weaknesses are, and, and you've got to continue to be consistent with your strengths, but I think you always got to try to improve your weaknesses. And I think that's obviously at his young age, he's still going to continue to do that. Bernie, how important was it for you, after knocking at the door of 100 points for a couple of years, to finally crack the 100-point barrier? Uh, it was important. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I go back to the first year where I, I ended up with 95 points. I mean, I broke my wrist with about five or six games left, so I, I probably would have got that done uh, that year. So it was, it was, it was way very disappointing. And, and then uh, all of a sudden, the next year, I think I came, uh, I ended up with a, a point less or something. I didn't get to 100. Uh, and I think it's just kind of a personal thing that you know, you don't have a lot of personal goals when you go. But uh, the one thing is always to try to be. Uh, what they're paying you for. And then if you're supposed to be a scorer, you're supposed to be a scorer, you score. If you're supposed to be a passer, you pass. So, um, you know, once you get into that role, um, you know, I think it was important to hit that 100 points. For me, it was at the time, because you're looking around, you're trying to compare yourself to other players that are in the league. And if you feel you're as good as they are, uh, you've got to produce the way they are. So, I mean, it's more of a mental challenge than anything else. And, um, you know, we became a really good hockey club. And I think that was the most important thing. And, uh, you know, when I finally did get to the 100 points, it was that we were a, a bona fide, really, really good hockey club. We finished with second that year uh, to the Islanders. So um, it, it was important to, to continue to try to, to be better as a player. Bernie, we've talked a lot about Colm Pareko and just how good he has been this season. And I came across this stat the other day. Pareko ranks first in the NHL with 191 block shots. What improvements have you seen from him this year? Look, I think, again, the word consistent is going to come up. I mean, he has uh, always had the, the uh, uh, I guess, the, the skill and, and, and the uh, uh, the size and, and, and the speed and everything. I mean, he's got the full package to put it all together and then be one of those really good defensemen in the league. And and uh, he is right. He's put it all together. I mean, he's playing with a lot of confidence right now. Uh, the coaching staff has given him lots of confidence. And I think he came back with that attitude. I mean, it was kind of a social year for him last year. And I think, again, it comes down to being a professional where you got to you want to prove to everybody that you're better uh, than what they thought you were or, or you're better than what they were disappointed in, I guess, maybe the year before. And you, you've always got that, that pressure on yourself. And I think he's just done that. I mean, he's, he's a great guy. He's got all the skills. I mean, the size that he's got and the speed that he's got. And now um, blocking the shots, he's getting involved more physically. And I, I, he's never going to be one of those guys that's going to punch someone in, in the face. But uh, he, he's one of those guys that, that's just really a solid, solid defenseman that can play as he's done, 25 minutes a game. He's, he's, he's one of those elite guys in the league now. We were talking about those young players earlier, Bernie, and, and give me one that you really enjoy that you've watched this year that's taken those strides to become a very good NHL player. Uh, on this team, Dan? Yeah. Uh, you he... know what? I, I think that we're, we're, we're just starting to get to those. I mean, Robert Thomas has, has improved a lot. I mean, he's one of the guys I've always watched because of the way he passes, but uh, he's one of those guys that, that, that is, is, is going to win. I mean, obviously, Jake Neighbors, um, I wasn't sure what he really was going to be. I mean, last year, I mean, you're a high, you're a first round draft pick, but you're a late first round draft pick. Um, you know, you've got the skills to do certain things, but where does Jake fit in? Well, uh, I think he's just done a marvelous job uh, of, of of taking a position and and making something out of it. I mean, he he understood he he get this opportunity to to be the kind of the net front presence on the power play, uh, and and then realize that. That's his bread and butter. You go to the front of the net, deflect pucks, um, take the eyes away from the goaltender, do all those little things, and uh, we know he can play physical. I mean, I think he's, a lot of him is rubbed, of Braden Shin is rubbed off on him from being really good friends with, with Braden, but uh, I really like the way his, his evolution has been because he has figured out what his job is, and he gets it. I mean, he, he's well-spoken. Uh, he knows uh, he, he acts like he's a veteran already just by the way he talks. And, and I just love the way he has really evolved over the course of the year. Bernie will be tuned in tonight on Bally Sports. Blues and Flames face off at 7. And you guys have the Bally pregame at 630. You and Alexa, thanks so much for the time. We appreciate it and have a great day. Thanks, guys. You have a great day, too. See you later. Happy Easter to everybody. Happy Easter. Thank you, Bernie. You, too. That is the Hall of Famer, Bernie Federico, here on 101 ESPN. Coming up, we need a fighter for the fight. 314-399-9646. 314-399-YO-HO! All you need to do is text in your name and the word fight, and maybe Bradford will pick you to fight me next on 101 ESPN. Coverage of 101 ESPN is presented by Under Law Injury Lawyers. Get Jim.com.
We all bleed blue, like my friends at Woods Basement Systems, but if you have a wet basement and foundation cracks, Woods knows you're feeling blue, too. Jamie Rivers here. Call Woods, the experts in all things basementy, and dry up that wet basement and repair that foundation. Because today is game day, and you need to stop feeling blue and start cheering for the blues. Get a free estimate from Woods. Go to woodsbasementsystems.com. That's woodsbasementsystems.com. Go Blues. Sponsored by Jim Butler Chevrolet.com. Take the fast lane home weekdays from 2 to 6 p.m. with Anthony Stalter, Jamie Rivers, and Gary Davis on 101 ESPN. Two former pros and one average Joe. The fast lane is driven by Scrap Mart Metals Recycling. Drive Brooke, Dan, and Bradford Bruns here, aka Brunzy. That's the nickname I decided to give you, right? Isn't that what I came up with? There it is. I was waiting patiently. I yes, know. Yes. I, at first, I wasn't going to do it. And I said, you know what? We're going to go back to the nickname because I like <laughs> Brunzy a lot. And we're a nickname show. And we're going to welcome in William. William, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Nice. You have a nickname? Uh, no, no nickname. Okay. No Willie. Just, just straight up William. That's nope. what we're doing here. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. All right, you ready to face Randy in the fight? I sure am. Okay, question number one, William. This afternoon in Los Angeles, the Cardinals opposed Tyler Glasnow and the Dodgers to open the 2024 season. Glasnow was selected by Pittsburgh in the fifth round of the 2011 Major League Baseball draft. But what other pitcher went number one overall that year? Is it Steven Strasburg, Garrett Cole, or Dylan Bundy? Oh... Uh. Finally. Okay, Bob Gibson holds the uh, St. Louis franchise record for most opening day starts with how many? Is it 8, 10, or 11? Did you 11. say, uh, what'd you say there, William? You cut out a bit. Uh, 11. 11, okay, got it. Question three, William. Three players in Major League history have eight career home runs on opening day. Ken Griffey Jr., Frank Robinson are two of them. Name the third. Is it Adam Dunn, Dave Winfield, or Eddie Matthews? Uh, could you repeat the could you repeat the three again? The three? Okay. It's Adam yeah. Dunn, Dave Winfield, or Eddie Matthews. Uh Dunn. Okay, question four. Last year, for the first time in franchise history, the Cardinals hosted an AL team in St. Louis for opening day. 
It was Toronto for that game. Score was 10 to 9. Who had a, wipe, a whopping five hits in the game? Was it Tyler O'Neill, Vladimir Guerrero Jr., or George Springer? I believe it was Springer. Okay. Let me go get uh, Randall and we'll. Oh, Bradford, you want to go grab him? All right, I'll go grab him. <laughs> We're having a battle of who's going to go grab Megamind. William, how are you feeling after that? Uh. So, so, I think I got maybe two of those. Okay. You never know how it can go, especially on opening day. By the way, are you excited for opening day, William? Uh, I am, but I love to have seen more pitching. Oh, yeah. Pitching, pitching, and more pitching. Hey, Mo did say that they were going to get three pitchers, and they did go get three pitchers. So that's, pre that's pretty accurate. Here comes Randy with his grapes. Randy, say hi to William. William, good morning. How you doing? I'm doing good, Randy. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks so much for listening, and thanks for participating today. We do appreciate it. Great to have you with us. All right. Thank you. Question number one, yes. Randy. Uh -huh. This afternoon in Los Angeles, the Cardinals opposed Tyler Glasnow and the Dodgers to open the 2024 season. Glasnow was selected by the Pittsburgh Pirates in the fifth round of the 2011 Major League Baseball draft. Mm -hmm. But what other pitcher went number one overall that year? What year was this again? 2011. 2011. So uh, that would be many years ago. Very true. 13. He's 30 now. Glasnow is. Uh, 2011 first pick. This was pre Houston having their issues. Who was really bad in 2010? It was like the Cubs would have been bad, but they didn't get him. Uh, you know what? I'll go early on with the lifeline here. Ooh, bro. wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Your options are Steven Strasburg, Garrett Cole, or Dylan Bundy. That doesn't help me much. Oh. <laughs> Uh, but Bradford's I will so excited right now, probably. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, will, <laughs> I, I will go with uh, I, I will go with uh, Strasburg. Okay, Bob Gibson holds the uh, St. Louis franchise record, Randall, for most opening day starts with how many? Hmm. Um. Seems like bouncing around in my head that the the ten is a number that would work so I, I will go with uh, I'll go with 10 final answer final answer sir question three three mm -hmm. players in major league history have hit eight career home runs on opening day Ken Griffey Jr. and Frank Robinson are two of them name the third Ken Griffey Jr. Frank Robinson I will uh, huh yeah I'm not going to go with Henry Aaron, who had a lot. I'm not going. McGuire seemed to hit a lot on opening day. Junior, Robbie, uh, maybe, maybe the play is. Because I'm trying to think, McGuire did, only did it once here, actually. Um, so I'm just. I'll go with the guy that played all those years. Well. I'm going to go with a guy that played all those years. Am I going to go with Mays or am I going to go with Aaron? Tough question. I'll go with Willie Mays. Last year, for the first time in franchise history, the Cardinals hosted an American League team in St. Louis on opening day. Toronto won that game. Score of 10 to 9. Who had a whopping five hits in that game? A whopping five, five hits. hits. Whew, bless you, Daniel. Thank you. Five hits in that game. 10 9 contest. <laughs> um, seems uh, it was a guy that got a lot of at bats, obviously. It, it seems like George Springer, for whatever reason, had a good game that day. I don't know if he, he was the one, but I know that he had multiple hits because we were talking about it during the game. So I will go just because it's all I can think of, with the George Springer of the Toronto Blue Jays. Final answer? Yes, sir. All right. Bradford? Goodness gracious. We have a dandy here Goodness on gracious. opening day. We have an absolute dandy, as a matter of fact. Dandy. 
William and RK going head to head. This one is exceedingly tight. So let's review some of these answers because, yes, we may indeed have a little extension to the party today. Question number one this afternoon in Los Angeles, the Cardinals opposing Tyler Glass now and the Dodgers to obviously open this season. Glass now taken by the Pirates in the fifth round of the 2011 MLB draft. What other pitcher, though, went number one overall that year? It was not Steven Strasburg. It was not Dylan Bundy of the Orioles at that time, but rather the now inactive Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole was actually the number one pick overall that year. Hmm. So Garrett Cole was the selection. Neither individual got that one. So let's head on to number two, Bob Gibson, the Cardinals owner, the franchise record for most opening day starts with how many overall choices were eight, 10 or 11. William did not go with the number 10. However, Randy weighed in with that double-digit figure. Indeed, Bob Gibson started 10 opening days for the St. Louis Cardinals. So RK with the slim lead at this point. Question number three. Three players in Major League history have hit eight career homers on opening day. Ken Griffey Jr., Frank Robinson, two of those. Name the third. The choices were Dave Winfield, Eddie Matthews, as well as Adam Dunn, William Nailed it with Adam Dunn and that prodigious light tower power at the Great American Ballpark. So we have a tie at the moment of one to one. And number four, last year, for the first time in franchise history, the Redbirds hosted an AL team from the East in the form of the Toronto Blue Jays on opening day. So the Blue Jays won that contest 10 to 9, who had five hits in the game. Was it Vladimir Guerrero Jr.? Was it the leadoff man, as you had intimated, Randy, George Springer, or Tyler O'Neill? It was actually, as a matter of fact, George Springer for that contest. Both individuals nailed it, so we have a 2-2 two to two score. We're going to extra time here. Oh, now, can, baby, can you, can a dandy. You, can you give me the, uh, the 2011 draft question again, please? Do you want the okay hold on here it is this afternoon in los angeles the cardinals opposed tyler glass now and the dodgers to open the 2024 season glass now was selected by pittsburgh in the fifth round of the 2011 oh, the major league baseball fifth draft round. okay got okay, it. okay just kidding no that's that's good that's all i needed oh i'm breathing yeah that's, we're good. <laughs> i was scared too yeah, we just good. talked about this being a dandy because yeah, they were I was both like, drafted uh -oh. by the pirates that's why <laughs> okay so I, I thought you said fifth overall but he was drafted in the fifth round okay go ahead let's we gotta hurry so let's do it with the tiebreaker. Here we oh. go. Closest to the pin. Randy, I'm going to give it straight up to you. William, stay tuned as well. So the way in which this works, Randy, you have your board ready to go? Ready. All right. Very good. Notepad, board, and pencil. Here we are. Straight up. The Cubs have the most opening day victories of any MLB franchise with how many of those wins? It's really surprising that the Cubs do. Uh, the uh, I'll go with uh... and there is your visual evidence randy holding up the number 63 aloft <laughs> sorry <laughs> oops <laughs> mulligan on opening day <laughs> william yes how much you guessing i am going to guess 66 william says 66 Randy had 63, a little bit of an error on the part here today. Technically, at the moment, upon further review, our winner, ring that bell. The winner and new champion of the fight, Average Joe Listener. The fight is presented by Golf Discount of St. Louis with the most experienced club fitters in town. Why shop anywhere else? I got excited by the digits there, Randy. I got excited. Yeah, you Re yeah. so good. <laughs> Revealed it to all. So that number actually for the Chicago Cubs, 81 wins as a matter of fact. 81 so far oh. all together, all time on opening day. William, you picked 66, a little above the number there I'm offered sorry. by Randy. Randy so. <laughs> I'm sorry, Randy's eating a Kit Kat to help, yeah. help him right As he now. should. Oh, no, it's just, it's, we're good. <laughs> as oh, he okay. should. Yeah. William, congratulations. A good hard-fought battle on this Thursday afternoon. Enjoy the Cardinals-Dodgers contest, and we'll be in touch with you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. That is <laughs> the fight on 101 ESPN.
giving out the number probably was not advantageous for you. Yeah, it, it, happens. it happens, though. It's okay. It happens. It Bradford, happens. it happens. Yeah. Coming up here on 101 ESPN, who is going to win the National League Central? We'll tell you that and the rest of the division winners and who's going to win the World Series. That's coming your way on 101 ESPN. College Hoops are on ESPN. Tomorrow, it's the Sweet 16. Coverage starts at 6. Your home for the NCAA is 101 ESPN. Your 101 mobile app. 101 ESPN Sports Center.
Roster set and ready to roll. I'm Bradford Bruns with your Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling. Yesterday, the Cardinals finalized their 26 man roster for this afternoon's season opener against the Dodgers. Jose Fermin is Memphis bound officially, ensuring Victor Scott II's path to the bigs. The 23 year old expected to start versus Tyler Glass now, and last year's class of the National League West, Miles Michaelis, takes the pitching assignment from Ali Marmol. Ice wise, the Blues tackle Calgary at at Enterprise Center tonight. Puck drop unfolds shortly after 7 on 101 ESPN, surveying the entire Central Division. Minnesota hosting San Jose. Nashville visits Arizona and the Avalanche host the Rangers. This Sports Center update was brought to you by Saliga. Heating and cooling, an independent American standard heating and air conditioning dealer. This is the opening drive on 101 ESPN. Brought to you by Sumner One. All right, with the baseball season starting today, we are going to pick our winners, and then we'll revisit these at the All-Star break, and then at the end of the season, we'll pick our division winners, our wild cards, our LCS winners and losers, and then our World Series champions. Let's start, Daniel, with the NL Central. Who you got? NL Central, I have the Cincinnati Reds, even with the uh, McLean injury. They've got uh, Montas now. They've added to their rotation. I like them. The Reds were just four wins shy of 86 last year. 86 wins would win the division, in my opinion, this season. I'll keep an eye out, though, for the Cubs. Cubs had a plus 96 run differential. Craig Council, can he make a difference with that run differential? So I've got, though, the Reds winning, the Cubs right there. The Cardinals will be right there as well. I All think right. that it will be all those teams right there as well. I agree with you, Dan, but I have the Cubs winning. That's what I have going on with the addition of Shoto Imanaga, which I know that he didn't look great the other day, but still, I don't think that's going to be indicative of what he's going to be able to do this season. Cody Bellinger bringing him back, and then I think Craig Council, you pay that much money for a manager, he better be a difference maker, and he'll be a big difference maker, especially with that bullpen. I'm going to be a homer, H-O-M-E-R. There you go. I'm going to go with your St. Louis Cardinals to win. I uh, I think that they'll get enough out of the the starters that they have that they'll be able to win 82 83 84 games and then if the bullpen can kick in you get to 85 wins and i think you can win this division so i'm going to go cardinals all right uh daniel nl west nl west uh i know you're going to find this pretty shocking but i have the dodgers <laughs> mm -hmm. it'll be their 11th championship division wise in the past 12 years so i do think it's going to be a really competitive division with the pitching that we talked about yesterday but man it's hard to pick against the dodgers with the three they have atop their lineup their starters were terrible last year in the postseason so what do they do they go out and get yamamoto they get glass now who we'll see today so i like the dodgers winning that division Bro. that's what i have as well sadly and it's just it seems like that's what you have to do here because they are just playing checkbook baseball as miles michaelis likes to say and i agree with them at this point they just have a lot of money they can do whatever they want it's like an endless pit of supply of money and i think it can pay off for them it would be incredibly bad though if it didn't work out for them they have to win the world series i'm just going to go ahead and put a spoiler alert out there i have them also winning the world series in this one because that's what the feeling is it's either world series or bust for this group all right let's move on now to uh well i'll tell you i've got the dodgers winning too so i think we're unanimous here and at least daniel in at least I have the Braves. Phillies have done it in the postseason, but not in the regular season. The Braves are built for regular season play. The question will be, will they purposely slow it down late in the season for the playoffs to align everything that they want to have that momentum going into it? But I like the Atlanta Braves and Brian Snicker. I have the Braves as well because Spencer Strider is one of the best pitchers in the National League. You have Max Freed as well. I know there might be some question marks with their starting rotation after that, but Spencer Strider is the real deal. I am a big fan of the depth of the Phillies starting pitching. So I'm going to go with Philadelphia to win that division. They're really, really good. And I would not be surprised if they would do what they've done the last couple of years and go deep into the playoffs. Again. Not at all. Yeah, not at all. They're really good. Uh, all right. So uh, you guys both have the Braves winning there. All right. Three NL wild cards. Daniel. I've got San Francisco, Arizona, and the aforementioned Philadelphia Phillies. I like those three teams, so I've got three coming out of the West. I have the Phillies, the Diamondbacks, and the Cardinals. And I, interestingly, uh, we've all got the Diamondbacks. That's, that's a good thing for them. Uh, I've got the Braves, Giants, and the Diamondbacks as my three wild cards. All right, uh, so in the American League, Central Division, 
American League Central Division. I've got the Twins. They got Byron Buxton, Carlos Correa, Royce Lewis atop their lineup. Pablo Lopez, potential Cy Young mm -hmm. Award winner. So I'll go with the uh, Minnesota Twins for your winner of is that what of you're saying AL or you're saying of oh of the al central i have just one second i thought we were doing al wild cards next so i was oh. a little thrown off there i have the twins as well okay. i just think that that's easy peasy but uh, you never know i'm gonna go with the, the shocker here the 56 win in 2023 royals really addressed their pitching staff during the offseason they've got a good young lineup and I think the Royals are going to turn things around and that's a bad division we talk about how bad yes. our division is that mm -hmm. division's even worse I thought about the Royals because they're going to come in with some momentum with what you spent mm -hmm. and with the fact that you signed Bobby Wood Jr. to a long-term deal he's the face of your franchise I, I gave them some thought but I thought the top three with the Minnesota lineup would be a little bit better than the other teams that you see in the central only one player has won the last three World Series it's Will Smith of the Royals. <laughs> yeah, right. That's true. <laughs> All right. Uh, AL West. I have, oh, go oh, ahead. Sorry. I cut you off, Dan. I have the Astros, but I think the Mariners can make it interesting. AL West, I got the Rangers. I said maybe Seattle, um, but I went with Texas, and that means I don't go to Houston. I mean, Houston added Josh Hader. They've won seven consecutive titles, but I went with the Rangers, and the reason I did that, they're going to get Max Scherzer in June. Tyler Malley in July, Jacob DeGrom in August. So they're going to get healthy, and they're going to be tough to beat. They are. I'm, I'm going to go with the Astros, too, though. They just have so much depth, so much experience. Mm -hmm. A couple of guys in, uh, well, now especially Bregman in a free agent year offensively. And uh, I mentioned yesterday that Kyle Tucker is going to be the American League MVP. So I'm going with the Astros like you, Brooke. Okay, AL East. In the AL East, you want to go ahead? No, go ahead. Fire away. I have the, drumroll, Orioles. I don't know if they can replicate their surprising 101 win season, but I still think that this is a very young and very talented group. So I'm going to go with the Orioles. Addition to Corbin Burns to that young talent. So I went with the Orioles, although the Yankees, I think, will be right there. If they can get Garrett Cole back, DJ LeMahieu is out. However, they're going to score a lot of runs now with the addition of Juan Soto. You got Judge. I mean, that that team is going to be loaded with that lineup. Yeah, I've got the Orioles as a wild card. I've got the Yankees winning that division. I think that with what they've done, and they made some additions to their bullpen. They, they say Marcus Stroman, and they're one team that has a wealth of young players that they're willing to move at a deadline because they're so desperate. So I'm going to go with the Yankees to win the AL East. Okay, wild cards in the American League. Now, Brooke, wild, AL wild cards. I will now. Finally, I figured that out. <laughs> so I have, for my wild cards, I have the Mariners, Blue Jays, and the Rangers. Went with the Yankees, Astros, and the Seattle Mariners. And I'm going to go with the Orioles to be a wild card because I had the Yankees winning the division. I am going to go with the Rangers and I, I, I'm going to go with another upset special here. I'm going to go with Ron Washington's Angels. I think, really? I, yeah. I, I like. Now that is really a wild card. I know. <laughs> I know. But they, they're kind of uh, offensively under the radar. I know that Anthony Rendon doesn't really care about it, but they're going to get a, a comeback year for Mike Trout. They've got some good young position players, and Washington has the ability, had the ability in Texas to kind of put together a pitching staff. So I, I think that they're going to throw things together there. I just don't know if they can get out of that division. That division's awfully it, tough. It's going to be a handful, and that's why I have three teams from that division yeah. playing in the in the postseason. Okay, LCSs. Daniel. LCS, I've got the uh, the Braves, and I also have, coming out of this, the uh, Philadelphia Phillies. Ooh, that is a good one. I think I can see that happening. I, I might go with that one, Dan, just because you seem a little bit more convincing with that one, because <laughs> I don't like my pick, so I'm going to go Braves and Phillies. Um, I have to have the Dodgers in there. <laughs> so I'm going to go Dodgers and Braves, two best teams. And then I went in the American League, I went with the Yankees and the Rangers. Those are my two teams that I have making it, advancing in the playoffs are the Yankees and the Rangers. Okay, good. Brooke, uh, for the American League, I am going to uh, uh, I'm going to go with the Rangers and the Astros. I, I think that uh, you, you've got another wild card here, and so I'm going to go Rangers and Astros to play for the American League pennant, and uh, I've got Houston going back against L.A. Wouldn't be surprising, mm -hmm. would it? What about the Orioles, though? I like the Orioles a lot, but... 
I just don't know enough. Sure, they won 102 games last year. They thought they lost some veteran leadership. They obviously they get burns, but losing a like a guy like Kyle Gibson, he was kind of a horse. He threw almost 200 yep. innings. He, he was Burns is going to have to be a horse for them. Their lineup is great. They've got a good manager. They've got a great system, and if they want to make a move for another starting pitcher, they have the wherewithal to do it. But I just don't think they're ready yet. I've changed my mind. I'm going to do Braves Dodgers. And can we go ahead and pick our winners for sure. those? Yes. I'm going to go with the Dodgers. And then I'm going to go with Orioles Astros with the Orioles coming up. I've got the Yankees and the Phillies. And I think when you have Juan Soto in a contract year, he's going to have a monster season, short porch and right. So I think he's going to be awesome this year. And it, mine is dependent on Garrett Cole getting healthy. Mm -hmm. If you have that number one stud going into postseason play, it makes your job a lot easier. And I love the Phillies. I love what they do in postseason play. And uh, I didn't have them winning their division, but I do have them going to the World Series. Which is smart in the National League. Yeah, absolutely. Last four full season bottom seed National League teams went to the World Series. Yep. So why not? It's a wild card, man. That, that's what that's the beauty of baseball, though, isn't it? I October mean, that's, happens. That, that's what happens is right. The yep. strangeness of the game. So those are our predictions. We'll revisit these babies at the All-Star break and then at the end of the season. Coming up, we've got the Rush Hour Reset. Brooke, Dan, and Randy on 101 ESPN. It's time for a DraftKings at Casino Queen Redbird Report on 101 ESPN. Brooke Grimsley here for your Redbird Report. Happy opening day, everyone. The Cardinals starting their 2024 campaign on the road facing the Dodgers today. First pitch is at 3.05. Miles Michael is getting the nod for opening day, marking the third time in his career that he'll have the honor. On the other side, new Dodger Tyler Glass now with his second start of the season after debuting against the Padres in Korea. The Cardinals finalizing their opening day roster yesterday, optioning Jose Fermin to AAA and outriding Jared Young to make room for Victor Scott II, who will be making his major league debut today wearing the number 11. The Redbird Report is presented by DraftKings at Casino Queen. Play, stay, dine at DraftKings at Casino Queen. Hit it out of the park this baseball season at DraftKings at Casino Queen. Book DraftKings at Casino Queen's Stay and Play Cardinals Hotel Package. This Grand Slam bundle includes one-night hotel stay, 10% off casino dining, two St. Louis Cardinals tickets, and free shuttle service to the game starting at just $149. Call 618-874-5000 to book today. Must be 21. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Based on availability, restrictions apply. Got a business lunch today over at the Fenton Bar and Grill. And if you're looking for a great place to take a client or a friend for lunch, the Fenton Bar and Grill is as good as it gets. All you need to do to get there is go to the soccer park and follow Rudder Road to the Fenton Bar and Grill. They have great lunch specials. They have a fantastic menu. The service is absolutely wonderful. Stop by and say hi to Kelly and Megan and Alicia. The whole crew will be over there. And when you go by the Fenton Bar and Grill, one of the things you have to keep in mind is you need to try the best trash wings that you'll ever had. Order the trash wings with either their signature golden sauce or some ranch and you'll absolutely love it. It's a great place to go in and talk sports. If you're looking for a place to watch the Cardinal opener, Fenton Bar and Grill is a great place to do it. And they'll have the Blues game and NCAA games on throughout the course of the afternoon and evening as well. You will absolutely love the Fenton Bar and Grill. I'm a regular, and I hope you'll become one too. When you stop by, tell them Randy sent you. Learn more at FentonBarandGrill.com for lunch, happy hour, games. It's the Fenton Bar and Grill. Alex Ferrario with you to talk about my friends over at Rhino Shield. When it comes to your house, the place that you live, you want to have pride in it. And after some years, if you've lived there for a while, the exterior starts to wear down. It looks older than what it needs to be. I can tell you from personal experience, my wife and I lived this. We bought a house about three years ago, and it looked old. Old. It was definitely not the style we wanted. We called Darren up at Rhino Shield. He came out and gave us a free estimate and explained to us how Rhino Shield works. And look, they don't use paint. It's not paint. What they use is a ceramic coating that has a 25-year transferable warranty. It's better than paint. And by better, it means anything you buy over the counter, it's not going to match with this. They use a two to three coat process. It's 100% waterproof. It deflects 90% of the UV rays. So when you use Rhino Shield, it's like the coating of a Rhino. You don't have to worry about it. So give Darren a call today. Have him come out. Get that free estimate for the Rhino Shield work. 877-25-RHINO. 877-25-RHINO.com. 
mortgage rates have finally dropped. That's right. Golden Oak has 5.375% fixed rates available right now. Our average cash out customer saves over $1,000 a month. Call today and take advantage of our 5.375 fixed rate. Call 314-567-GOLD. That's 314-567-GOLD. Golden Oak, let's eat your 5.934 APR, FHA 15-year, 20% equity qualified credit. Additional terms apply. NMLS 114937. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely on advertisements. If you've been injured in a car wreck, you need the best. Underlaw, voted 2023's best law firm in St. Louis. We know how to handle the insurance companies, and we'll make sure you're compensated for physical, emotional, and financial injuries. Let us make your case our cause. Car accident? Call Underlaw today for a free review. 314 or 618 9 million. That's 314 or 618 9 all zeros. Auto Center's Nissan Herculaneum. They've got over 700 vehicles all in one location. You can start at AutoCenter'sNissan.com. You can peruse the vehicles that they have right there online and then head out to Auto Center's Nissan Herculaneum and you can test drive new vehicles. How about a new Nissan Altima up to $4,000 off MSRP? home opener is next Thursday at Bush Stadium and 101 ESPN will be broadcasting live throughout the day from the Budweiser Brew House inside Ballpark Village. The home opener is finally here and will be set up just steps away from the stadium with the opening drive. BK and Ferrario and the Fast Lane live from Ballpark Village. Our opening day broadcast is refreshed by Budweiser. This Bud's for you and by Holiday World and Splash and Safari where there's always free soft drinks, free parking, and free sunscreen. Visit HolidayWorld.com. WXOS, WXOS HD1 East St. Louis, 101 ESPN is driven by Auto Centers Nissan, home of the lifetime warranty and 30-day return. Live from the Car Shield Studio, this is the opening drive on 101 ESPN. We're recapping the biggest sports stories of the day on the opening drive with a rush hour reset. 906 time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler. We are going to re well, we're going to kind of recap, but we're going to tell you what's going to happen rather than what has happened uh, as we start this rush hour reset. We didn't uh, uh, give you a clarity as to who the world champions are going to be for the 2024 baseball season. So, Brooke, who are your World Series champions for 2024? Well, I have the Dodgers as my National League champs, and then I have. The Orioles is my American League champ, and I think it's going to be like last year's World Series 2.0 where you have a young team in the Orioles, kind of like the Diamondbacks, a very young but talented team, and then you're going to have a Rangers team, which is kind of similar to the Dodgers, of course, not as much money-wise, but still, they spent a lot of money and have a lot more veterans with the Dodgers, but I do have the Dodgers coming out on top, so I have Rangers and not excuse me not rangers excuse me orioles and dodgers win the world series with the dodgers coming out on top sadly oh okay i say sadly because i just don't want it to happen the uh, yankees and the phillies but that's all contingent on garrett cole getting back in healthy so i'm relying on the big horse to get back and be healthy and if he is then watch out for the yanks first time since 2009 so I got the Yankees doing it. All right. <laughs> and I have the Dodgers winning. I say, I, I think the checkbook baseball wins out over the other checkbook baseball. Uh, Josh Hader joining the Astros. Right. I think they wind up in the World <laughs> Series. And uh, Dodgers, uh, they're getting Walker Bueller and Clayton Kershaw back as they move along during this season. Yeah. It's going to be. It's going to be a, a just a gallery of riches for the Doyers. Think about, though, the Rangers, when I brought up this point. You get Max Scherzer back, Tyler Malley, and Jacob DeGrom. I yep. mean, that trio is formidable, too. 
And you've got arguably the best manager going. It's pretty Andrews good. Bochy. Yep. He, players love playing for him, and he knows how to manipulate guys to have his bullpen work at maximum efficiency. I think he'll get the most out of the young players, too. They have such mm-hmm. elite talent coming that he'll – it's old school. You just put him in, you plug and play. Let him yeah. play. Let him Wyatt play through Langford. the. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, Carter's still technically a rookie too. Right. So you just let them play through the ups and downs of a season, but keep putting them in the lineup, and you probably couldn't have a better guy to handle those type of players. Yep. As long as you keep Adolis Garcia healthy, he's pretty good, by the way. He is. <laughs> he's yeah. really good. He's a middle of the lineup guy. Blues in action tonight here on 101 ESPN. Seven o'clock with the faceoff. Six o'clock pregame here on 101 ESPN. The Blues will be without Oscar Sunkvist, who tore an ACL against. Why are you looking that way, Brooke? Oh, I just... Nothing. Oscar Sunkovist? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, he, he tore an ACL against Vegas the other night. Hard and soul guy, man. <laughs> Down the stretch. Oh, man. And he's playing on your second power play unit. He'll take a puck to the face. He's great in the locker room. So that is a big loss for the Blues, yeah. no doubt. And so he'll miss April, May, June, July, Ugh. August. So five months. I wonder how long it'll take him to return from an ACL. I think you won't see him till November. Probably. You know, I, I'm, I'm saying six months. Yeah, I would think so. You know, so that puts you at November. Mm, that's a that's yeah. a big loss for the Blues. I was trying to figure out, did he sign? And he signed an extension two recently. Years. It was yeah. two years. So that is very tough. But you're right, Dan, a heart and soul guy. Very well respected in that locker room and brings a lot of leadership to the group. So I just hate to see that happen to him. The Cardinals will open up their 2024 season this afternoon at Dodger Stadium. It will be Miles Michael, Michaelis against Tyler Glass now. You can see the game on Bally at 310 this afternoon as the Redbirds try to rebound from their 71 win season Mm. of 2023 a lot of changes and we'll see a lot of those this afternoon especially with the cardinals making having several players making their opening first opening day starts mason win and victor scott are going to be two of those it's amazing if you're miles michaelis you look up in the first inning okay there's mookie betts mvp in 2018 runner up three different times okay i got through him oh now it's shohei otani i got the mvp of 21 and 23 i got through him Oh, there's Freddie Freeman, the MVP in 2020. I went back and looked at this. The last time you had former MVPs in the top three spots, you have to go to 1983 in the Phillies. It was Joe Morgan, Pete Rose, and Mike Schmidt. Wow. I mean, that's what you're facing today. I mean, those are Hall of Fame players that you're going to be facing in the first inning of this game. It's a, it's, And we were watching the game on the TVs the other day. It's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing when you're watching it's just the lineup is just relentless. And then for a pitcher, the pressure must be enormous. Well, Miles Michaelis doesn't really feel the pressure. Do you want his quote that he had? Yes. Okay. Well, we already know about the checkbook one. He elaborated even more so the other day. Now, I can't say exactly everything that he says because there are some curse mm-hmm. words, but here we go. I'm not going to tell all the people downing us to eat crap i'd like to but in the off chance i'm wrong i look like an idiot but in the chance they're wrong and i'm right that'd be pretty neat well i i hope it is neat for him i hope he's paying attention to what's going on around him uh because it's going to be very difficult for the cardinals to be highly successful and i i would love for them to make us eat crow but if you look at the the group of players that the Cardinals have, they're pretty good. But can they compete with the Phillies, the Braves, the Do- the Dodgers, even the Giants? I don't know. I don't think so. You just have to have luck along the way. Yep. I mean, yep. and I know people don't want to hear that, but when you look at it on paper, no, they can't. They just can't. Yep. I mean, you look at the lineup that the Dodgers are going to put out today. You can't yep. compete with that, and no one can. DeMarco always used to tell me that uh, in his rookie year, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, he said, you know, I'm listening to you on the radio, listening to me talk ra- on the radio. He said, and you were saying that we were bad, and I thought we were good. He said, I had no idea we were bad. <laughs> I always thought we were pretty good, even when they had the bad records. And I think we asked Bernie about it. It's kind of the mentality of the athlete. It's a great mentality to have, but at the same time, it's not dealing in reality all the time. Mm-hmm. And if you're a player, that's what you want. I mean, it's kind of like the blue situation where you say, hey, we still have a chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You come down, you play hard, you get wins, you see where it ends up. But, you know, from the Cardinals in an opening day perspective, you're just excited as a player. You know, guys come to the ballpark, they're excited. Yep. But then there's the reality of once the season gets going of how you stack up. Yeah. What is the only way that you can slow down or stop the Dodgers this year? Injuries. 
But even then, they'll go out and pluck guys. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They have so much depth, and they have the spending power. So what is the only way to stop them or slow them down? A, ser- a seven-game series or a five-game series. Yeah, where your number one blows up a couple of times. Yep. He goes in one, he goes in game five, and all of a sudden you get two wins and take your best shot on the uh, lesser guys. But over 162, I don't see a scenario in which the Dodgers don't win that division. I don't see a scenario where they don't win 105 games. Yeah, they, they're they unbelievable. Even even in that division yeah. with the great pitching that's in the West, I, I still just don't see how they can. And finally, the NCAA tournament resumes today as well. 6 o'clock tonight, you've got Clemson and Arizona. 6.30, you've got San Diego State and UConn. 8.30, you've got Alabama and North Carolina. And then at 9.09 on TBS and True TV, the Fighting Illini taking on Iowa Snake. And uh, <laughs> hopefully the Fighting Illini with the number one offense in America will be able to knock off Iowa Snake with the number one defense That's going to be America. a great matchup tonight. It's going to be fun. Our old friend Jim Holder attended Iowa State. Oh, did he really? I went to Iowa Snake. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, Daniel, yep. let me tell you about the Brockster. He's uh, doing well. <laughs> I wonder how old Brockster is now. Probably f- older than 30, 30 35. 30, uh, 35. 35 is what yeah, I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. We're talking, by the way, for people that don't know, Jim Holder, longtime sportscaster. We're talking about his son, Brockster. L- yeah, legendary St. Yep. Louis sportscaster. And a gentleman. Uh, One of the nicest people that you could ever meet. That is the Rush Hour Reset on 101 ESPN. Coming up, we're going to talk some blues hockey with Jeremy Rutherford. Our blues insider from The Athletic is next on 101 ESPN. It's time for another moment in blues history. On this day back in 2009, the Blues would beat the Columbus Blue Jackets 4-3. to Two teams battling it out in the Central Division. Blues picked up their 36th win of the season. Keith Kachuk, Patrick Berglund, Alexander Steen all scored the goals in regulation. Then in a shootout that went eight rounds, David Perron and Brad Boys would score the two goals for St. Louis. Chris Mason earned the victory. The state in Blues history was powered by Classic air care making people comfortable since 1926 for all your hvac needs classicaircare.com Hey everyone, it's Brooke here, and this year we decided it was time to make a major upgrade to our home by updating our bathroom. We have this house in U City, it's over 100 years old, and we don't exactly love our main bathroom, so we decided it was time to make a big change. So we decided to reach out to one of our great sponsors here of 101 ESPN, and that is ENB Granite. ENB Granite's team came by our house for a free consultation, and they came up with a vision of how to really transform our bathroom. They really took the lead here on helping us with the plans. My favorite part of working with them was going by their amazing showroom to explore their large selection of in-stock custom countertops and all of their cabinet options. It was so much fun, of course, for me, picking out the colors for a new bathroom. Jen was the one who was working with us, and she has just been so amazing. She had so many great ideas for us that fit within our budget, and that's what they do there at EMB Granite. They've been turning visions into realities for over 20 years. So go and schedule your free consultation by calling 314-645-9300 or go online to embgranite.com or stop by their amazing showroom today and tell them that I sent you.
Drive on 101 ESPN. Brought to you by Sumner One. News, notes, and nuggets. It's time for the Rutherford Report with our Blues insider, Jeremy Rutherford. Brought to you by Scott Lee Heating Company, a proud Mitsubishi Electric Elite contractor. Blues and Flames tonight. The Blues heading into their final 10 games of the season. And you'll hear it here on 101 ESPN. Jeremy Rutherford, our Blues insider from The Athletic, joins us now on 101 ESPN. Good morning, sir. How you doing? Good morning and happy opening day, everybody. Happy opening day to you as well. What do you think the Cardinals are going to do in the Central? <laughs> oh, I think it's going to be a great season. And I'm so glad that uh, Jordan Montgomery hung out all off season and waited for the deal that he could have got four months ago. Yeah, I know. He could have been the first guy to sign. If he, if Boris would have said, you're only getting one year and $25 million, he would have said, sign me up. Let's just do it now. Yeah. That's all I can get. I would love to be part of the conversation. There's got to be conversations over the years where one of those guys who waited to the last minute and then, you know, got off to a bad start, just went back and said, Scott, look, I get it. You're the king of this, but come on, this – this really didn't do me any favors. It'd be fun to hear one of those conversations. <laughs> no doubt about it. Well, JR, we are, of course, looking for some sunshine and lollipops right now for the Blues as they finish out this last stretch of the season. What can they do at this point that could possibly help them make the playoffs? Well, win the rest of them. I guess that would be the key there, but that would be sunshine and lollipops. And, hey, hey look, they have, they've put themselves in a good position with this last stretch going what six and one before the loss to uh, to Vegas the other night? They played hard in that Vegas game. I mean, how many times did they hit the post, hit the crossbar? You know, that could have been a victory. And as I said in my story a couple of days ago, admittedly, I would have written a story about these guys keep hanging around and they're making it interesting. But uh, you know, they didn't win that one, and you know, Vegas uh, gets a point the next night against Nashville. So it looks pretty tough. You know, down six with just the ten games to go. You know, I think that at this point, you just uh, play hard to the finish, see what happens, and hope that uh, some of these young guys get some good experience. And speaking of young guys, who steps up with the loss now of uh, Oscar Sundquist? Who do you think is going to get some of that ice time? Yeah, so it'll be Zach Dean, and, and that's assuming Zach, Zachary Bolduc will already be in the lineup. I'm assuming they'll go back to 12-6, uh, and 6, 12 forwards tonight against uh, Calgary. Um, so Bolduc, who's been in the lineup pretty regularly, uh, should be back in. And then also Zach Dean is the guy who's going to get some Oscar Sundquist minutes. He's the guy who they got in the Ivan Barbashev trade. He played one game in Ottawa. I asked Drew Bannister about it yesterday. He said first game I thought he played pretty good. You know, the guy can skate. He likes to get up and down the ice. And I think that uh, once we see some more of them, we'll get a better feel for what type of player he is. And we should see him tonight against the Flames. JR, the NCAA hockey tournament starts tonight, and Minnesota will be on television on ESPNU at 7.30, in addition to the Blues game on Bally Sports, of course. It, does it make sense now if Jimmy Snuggerud's team should get eliminated tonight against Omaha? Does it make any sense at all for the Blues to try to get him here before their regular season ends? Well, first got to ask you guys, you guys know how the press box is at Enterprise Center. you got the Blues in front of you on the ice against the Calgary Flames and about six TVs behind you with that Minnesota game on tonight. I think I'm going to get a kink in my neck tonight <laughs> trying to uh, to keep an eye on that Snuggerud game. But, but yeah, so it, it would be nine games after tonight. Hypothetically, let's say everything came together inside of 24 hours and he was a Blue on Saturday with nine games left on the season. You know, I could see where the Blues and Snuggerud might look at that and say, hey, even though it's going to burn one year of the uh, three years on your uh, entry-level deal, uh, you can get some good experience there and know what to expect when you come back next season. But I can also see that, you know, this is a situation where uh, he could he could come in and, and, and decide what he wants to do, perhaps go to Springfield, play on, on a tryout where he would not burn that one year. Uh, I don't know. I mean, nine games is a good chunk of games. So I do think it could be beneficial. The player is going to want to play. In the NHL, you know, if Snuggerud is going to make that decision to turn pro, it, it's going to want to uh, to play uh, with the St. Louis Blues. And then, you know, big picture, what does the one year matter? It just means that if he does come out and produce in those next two years, it's going to be a bigger paycheck in that third year when it would have just been the final year of the three-year entry-level deal. So I can see both sides of it, but nine games is a lot. I guess that's what I'm looking at. JR, you have an article out right now that you just posted two hours ago on The Athletic where you kind of discuss some of the possibilities for this offseason, including if Army will buy, do, buy out a contract, some of the players who may or may not be returning. I want to stick with that. Who are some players that you think might not be returning next season? 
Yeah, so first uh, what we tackled were, were the guys who were unrestricted free agents. So you're looking at Marco Scandella, you're looking at Casperi, Kapanen, Sammy Blay. You know, I think that there's a chance that Scandella could come back, but I think you have to let the situation play out with uh, the defenseman. What's Doug Armstrong going to do with the top four? Is Perinovich coming back? What do they think about Tyler Tucker? When all that dust settles, you know, then you could make a decision if Marco Scandella is still available uh, to, to bring him back. Casper Kapanen, Sammy Blay, I don't think so. I don't think those guys uh, have, have done enough and, and with the case of uh, Blay that he's been in the lineup enough uh, to warrant coming back even as a depth guy. Then you start, Brooke, I know that the person who wrote into the mailbag was probably asking beyond the unrestricted free agent. Like when you talk about the Nick Lettys, the Brandon Sods, uh, you know, those types of guys, Tory Krug, which of those guys may not be back. It's just a little bit too early to get into that conversation because we don't know what Doug Armstrong is going to do in terms of the direction. Are they going to continue to, to try to be competitive next year and, and be in that wild card conversation? Or are they going to take a, a little bit of a further step back and, and kind of go with the younger guys and uh, add some more assets? So we'll see, but a little bit too early in that conversation. It's really tough. I want to go back to the Sunquist injury for just a moment, and maybe you can lay this out for in layman's terms. Just what he means to this this hockey team and this club, not just what he brings on the ice, but also off the ice. A lot, Danny. As everybody knows, he is just the motor of this team. He has been. And, and listen, I can't think of a player other than David Prime, that's obvious, where he left and there was so much uh, disappointment. And when when Oscar Sundquist got traded to Detroit uh, in that Nick Letty deal, there were a lot of disappointed Blues fans. They were excited that he came back. He comes back this year. And look, he hasn't been healthy in a few years. He comes back and up until he tears the knee ligament the other day, he's uh, he's played every game and, and, and been healthy, but with the exception of the one healthy scratch. So um, I think that now you get a Oscar Sundquist coming back from an ACL. He's entering his early 30s. It's going to be tough to see that type of player. But big picture, to answer your question, he wants to help this retool. He wants to help these young players. And I think when he comes back, he's going to be able to do that. Hey, JR, I, I want to go back because you know the uh, the buyout better than, than I do. I'm wondering, and it would cost a lot of cash for the Blues, but if they were to buy out a guy that's making $6.5 for three or four more years, mm-hmm. is that a sensible move? Is it worthwhile from a cap standpoint to make that sort of a move? How does the, the buyout work? Yeah, so we addressed this in the mailbag today, and for anybody who has an athletic subscription or wants to see it, I use Tory Krug as the example, and I'll give you my uh, my uh, conclusion first. I don't think it makes sense. I think it makes more sense to try to find a trade, even if you have to give up, you know, some assets. And here's how the buyout works with Tory Krug. He's got three more years left on his deal, as you mentioned, six point five million dollars. He he's owed twenty one million more dollars in the life of the contract. With the buyout, you owe the player two-thirds of that amount, so you owe Tory Krug 14 of the $21 million remaining. So you're going to save $7 million if you do the buyout, Randy, and you have to pay that money double over the life of what's left of the contract. So instead of three years, you have doubled that time, so you have six years. So you're going to carry a cap hit of about $2.33 million on Tory Krug for the next six years to pay off that $14 million that you owe him. I just don't see how it's worth it. I think that if there's a taker like there apparently was with Philadelphia, perhaps you revisit that. It makes a lot more sense than to carry two and a half million dollars on your cap the next six years. Makes sense. Thank you very much for simplifying that. And uh, we love your work at the athletic. Anything else? You know, as Brooke mentioned, you just had a new story came up, come out. What's the next one up? Yeah, we'll have part two of the mailbag uh, coming up, and then obviously we want to pay attention to uh, the rest of these games. And uh, I know it's been a while. I know I promised you guys a Robert Thomas story at some point, but uh, just working with the timing of that and when we should uh, put it out there, maybe towards the uh, end of the season or early off season. but we'll have something on your guys' guy, Robert Thomas. Are you uh, trying to catch up with Jimmy Snuggerud at all in the next week or two? Sure, yep. Yep, all over that. Uh, got uh, a feeler out with uh, Jimmy Snuggerud for whenever he's making his decision and what he wants to, to say about that decision. So depending on the outcome of tonight's game or this weekend and what happens with Jimmy Snuggerud, we'll also have him at The Athletic. Happy Easter, sir, to you and yours. You guys too, yeah. Opening day, Snuggerud, Easter, a lot going on here. No doubt about it. Thank you, sir. See you later.
All right, see you guys. JR, Jeremy Rutherford, our Blues Insider from The Athletic on 101 ESPN. Next up, the NCAA tournament continues tonight across the country and tomorrow night as well. What are we looking for tonight? That's next on 101 ESPN. The madness of March continues this week on 101 ESPN with Sweet 16 and Elite 8 action. March mayhem on 101 ESPN is courtesy of Salika Heating and Cooling, your independent American standard heating and air conditioning dealer. See our entire March Madness schedule now at 101ESPN.com. Hey, it's Danny Mack on this Thursday for Stewart's American Mortgage. If you're someone who is looking to purchase a home, refi, if you're looking to consolidate some of that ugly credit card debt, maybe you don't know exactly what direction to go to in any of these things. Let me make it easy for you. Call Stewie from Stewart's American Mortgage. We've hooked up with him this morning. And Stewie, what about a cash out refi? What's it all about? Danny, this customer was driving down on 40, and he was on his way to a big bank in town to go get a home equity line of credit. He wants to do home improvements, pay off those credit card debts that are 20 30 percent. And he heard the commercial on the air, and he turns around, and he said, okay, let's call Stewie. And he calls me up. What he didn't realize that a home equity line of credit is interest only. It's a variable interest rate hovering around 10 11 percent. You make the payments every single month. Five years later, you still owe what you started with. It's a bad idea. He's refinancing his home mortgage right now, getting a fixed rate. Doesn't have to worry about the rates going up. Doesn't have to worry about the Federal Reserve. Gets the cash out he knows with a fixed payment, and he doesn't have to worry about anything. It's a smarter way to go. If you owe a lot of money on the credit cards, 20 30 percent, or you want to do that home improvement job, Take advantage now and do the cash out refinance while you can. Now, Stewie, that had to be our commercial, I'm assuming. Is that right? Yeah, 100%, Danny. Actually, it was your commercial and you talking about it. I love it. All right. Stuart's your guy. He makes it easy. Any questions on rates, the industry, the trends, give Stuart a call. And you can call him right now. On his personal cell phone, he'll pick up or text him 314-324-4440, 314-324-4440, or you can Google the bagel loan. NMLS number 226715. Thanks for calling Toyota. This is Jan. Hi, Jan. My kids are really excited about spring break, so I'm looking for a new Toyota to help make it amazing. Now until April 1st is a great time for a new Toyota. Imagine you and the kids in a tundra on your way to the lake to go speed boating. Or even taking a RAV4. To an animal sanctuary to pick goats. <laughs> Sounds like your kids aren't the only ones excited about spring break. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Dealer inventory may vary. See your participating Toyota dealer for details.
sponsored by Jim Butler Chevrolet.com. Catch every show live on our YouTube channel or at 101ESPN.com. 101 ESPN Studio Camps. Presented by the Air Alliance Team Heating and Cooling. Getting the job done quickly, correctly, 100% of the time. 101 ESPN Sports Center. Scott and the Cards sprint toward first pitch. Good morning. I'm Bradford Bruns with your Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Lawndoff Chevrolet and Johnny Lawndoff Autoplex. This afternoon at 310, the Cardinals commence their 2024 season in Los Angeles. It's Miles Michaelis versus Tyler Glass now for the mound matchup. Michaelis will have Victor Scott the second patrolling center field behind him as the 23-year-old speedster makes the 26-man roster. Other matchups around the majors feature the Cubs and defending World Series champion Rangers. Former Brewers ace Corbin Burns, now an Oriole, squares off with the Angels. And tonight, downtown, the Blues drop the puck against Calgary at 7. One hour earlier, Alex Ferrario and Joey Vitale have your pregame festivities on 101 ESPN. The Sports Interrupt was driven by Johnny Londoff. Find new roads and shop 24-7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? Live from the Car Shield studio, this is the opening drive on 101 ESPN. One, two, three, four. The NCAA tournament continues this evening. There are games in Los Angeles and Boston. First game of the night, six-seeded Clemson taking on number two, Arizona. Arizona featuring CBC's Caleb Love, the Pac-12 player of the year, averaged more than 18 points a game. And Arizona is a seven-and-a-half-point favorite over Clemson, seven and a half point favorite over Clemson. I'm going with Arizona because I have them in my final four, so I need that to happen. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> <laughs> we need them to keep going here. So you mentioned Caleb Love, and I always like seeing the local players. And also want to mention, I know we're going to get to Iowa State, but Vashon's Keyshawn Gilbert, he posted mm-hmm. double figures in each of Iowa State's first two tournament games. So he's a player to watch for Iowa State, which we'll talk about here soon. Very proud of myself. I still have six of the eight teams on this side of the bracket. Ooh. Very nice. There you, you go, Dan. I noticed you guys didn't ask me about the other side of the bracket. Yeah, how's that going? Well, uh, well talk about that later. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> it's that bad. <laughs> My other side is terrible, but I can't wait for the Illinois game against Iowa State. So, mm-hmm. Randy, you talked about it earlier. You have one of the great offensive teams right now and efficiency in the fighting Illini. Iowa State gets after you defensively. One or two, depending on the, the rankings that you look at across college basketball with their defense. So, Illinois and Iowa looking, or excuse me, Illinois, Iowa State really looking forward to that matchup tonight. Since the regular season ended, since the start of the Big Ten tournament, Illinois is averaging 88.4 points a game. They're rolling, and Shannon is tearing things up. So the question is, can Illinois penetrate that defense? And I have a—they seem to be more athletic than Iowa State. Iowa State does play great defense, and they shoot the daylights out of the three. Isn't it interesting how all the favorites are winning? in these yeah. games and uh I, I call it the yukon invitational another game that is tonight yukon and auburn i i don't see how yukon loses any game going forward no, you got in san diego state or san diego state yeah. excuse me i don't see how they lose any game going forward no it really feels like it's just basically yukon versus everybody else as you mentioned the invitational basically mm-hmm. that's what it feels like at this point and i really do believe because i also have them winning it all and i'm sure a lot of other people do too and it looks good at this point i think they'll be the first repeat champs since florida in 2007. Yeah. it was interesting danny hurley was asked about the first two games, the head coach at UConn, and, he, and the only thing he could pick on was, well, the second half, we didn't get after it enough. They were up by 25 mm-hmm. in the second. Yeah. I mean, what I, else do you do if you, you're, you know, I mean, how do you make it competitive or wh- how do you motivate your players? They're up by 25, and how, they know they're going to win the game. How do you ask them to get after it more when yeah. they're up 25, right? And who remembered? Well, that's a coach, but, I guess, yeah, right? Right. Who remembered that UConn and San Diego State was the national championship game last year? I didn't exactly. remember that. Oh, yeah. and, and it's a rematch tonight. Oh, yeah, you're right. How so, exciting. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't realize that. It, last year just kind of seems like a blur with the NCAA tournament, yeah. but you're right. That is what's going to happen. Now, this is the thing, though, is that it just feels like UConn's going to easily win this one. 
It does feel like that. Now, Alabama and North Carolina tonight, I I was not sold on North Carolina as a number one seed. They're legit. They're really good. But I do think that the the team that can, the style of team that can beat North Carolina is Alabama. And, and Alabama, they get up and down the floor. I was going to say, it's going to be a track meet. It will be. It will yeah. be. What do you guys think about SEC basketball in general with their presence or lack of thereof in the NCAA tournament? Uh, we're, fo- we're about football. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just means it just more means football. More. <laughs> it means more football is what it means. Exactly. There. So you have Kentucky with that very disappointing first round exit. I mean, you have others. I was expecting a little bit more out of a lot of the other SEC teams this believe, year. And uh, you have Tennessee, of course, yeah. who's doing well. SEC three and five, I believe. Or no, four and five in the four and five. Yeah. In, in the nine games that they played. Yeah. It's just a distraction until the spring football game comes around. <laughs> yeah. And really, that's what it is. It is. Um, about it. I am looking forward to watching the kid Baycott from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Now, here's a guy that has stayed there. He's been through the ups and downs. He went to a championship game with Caleb Love, and uh, he's one of the more recognizable faces in college basketball. He actually has an NIL deal that's rolling out on some of the commercials here for the uh, NCAA tournament. So I like watching him play. He's kind of the heart and soul of that uh, Tar Heel club. He kind of fits what they are, too, doesn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He just seems to be one of those guys. And, uh, Finally, uh, Brooke, as you mentioned, let's touch on Keyshawn Gilbert, the Vashon product who led Iowa State in scoring 13.7 points a game. He uh, he, he can become a star tonight with, with the team that they're playing and as visible as this game is going to be and the fact that if they're going to win, they're going to need him hitting threes and he hits 32.7% from three. He's a guy that could have a night that turns him into a star tonight. It really could. And so that'll be exciting to see for that Vashon alum. But on the other side, as you guys mentioned, that high scoring offense for Illinois, I don't know how you slow that down. I don't know how you slow down Terrence Shannon Jr. That's going to be the big issue for Iowa State is how do you slow him down? He had 26 points against Moorhead State, and then he had 30 against Duquesne the other day on Saturday. And he also went 10 for 14 from the field. That is a really hard guy to slow down. Yeah, Pretty good uh, sports day, by the the way it's great sports day opening it? day then you had the blues and then it rolls into a late Illini game I know you guys will be staying up late I will of course you will I like watching sports you love it it's your life it kind of is unfortunately yeah <laughs> no, no, is. fortunately fortunately, no, fortunately for sure I'll yeah. be up I have a cooking class tonight that will lead into that game cooking class what are you guys uh, working on well i say cooking class and it's actually a knife skills class so oh. we will be doing some cooking but we will be learning about knives mostly i don't know it's another it's a couple date night basically oh adorable with another couple I, it is adorable it might be <laughs> it should be dandy if you will brunzy yeah it'll be a dandy evening hmm. I just question knife skills when you ha- you aren't even married yet. I was just going to say, oh, what Randy. What are you trying to say, Randy? I was just going to say, I don't want to be near a sharp knife with my wife holding it. <laughs> I'm running the other way. It seems obvious, doesn't it? Are you yeah. saying that maybe we should check uh, each other's life insurance policies <laughs> yes, before this? Yes. Okay. No, we'll be fine. We're just going to be learning how to cut things and not each other, Randy. Oh, good. Okay. I'm glad. <laughs> uh, coming up, we've got Rock and Roll featuring Bradford Bruns as we head down the stretch of this edition of the opening drive on 101 ESPN. ESPN. Major League Baseball is back on ESPN. Sunday night, Cardinals and Dodgers. Pre-game at 5. First pitch at 610. The MLB plays on 101 ESPN. Mortgage rates have finally dropped. Call today for a free mortgage checkup. Pay off those credit cards. Call 314-567-GOLD. That's 314-567-GOLD. Golden old land, enjoy my blue. 
MLS one one four nine three seven. Alex Ferrario with you to talk about my friends at Rhino Shield. Plenty of businesses around the area have used Rhino Shield's product. Rhymes Heating and Cooling in South County, St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Campbell Hill, Illinois, the Har Gravoy Village Shopping Center in High Ridge. That's my neck of the woods. All of these businesses called Darren at Rhino Shield. Why? Because the exterior of their business needed a facelift, whether it was water damage, whether it was paint chipping off. The look didn't match the product and that's why they called Rhino Shield because they wanted the facelift. Rhino Shield uses a ceramic coating. It's not paint, which means you're going to get the proper product that when you use Rhino Shield's work, you never have to worry about it again. It's a 2 to 3 coat process. It's 100% waterproof. It deflects 90% of the UV rays. You set it and forget it and you get a 25-year transferable warranty. Have Darren come out from Rhino Shield, give you a free estimate 877 25 Rhino 877 725rhino.com. Drive on 101 ESPN. Brought to you by Sumner One. I want to rock. And roll. Let's rock. Let's rock today. Redford Bruns in for. The one, the only, Matthew Rocchio. Rock and roll coming up in a moment. But we want you to know that we're going to be broadcasting live from the Budweiser Brew House at Ballpark Village next Thursday for Cardinals opening day at the ballpark for the home opener, which is almost here. And with us, the opening drive, BK and Ferrario and the Fast Lane will all be coming to you live next Thursday, April 4th from Ballpark Village. Oh, by the way, we go till 11 that day. Uh, our opening day broadcast brought to you by Holiday World and Splash and Safari in Santa Claus, Indiana, and by <laughs> Budweiser. We discovered that yesterday, that it was yeah. in Santa Claus, Indiana. I want to know if anybody's been there, because I'm very intrigued by this place. I can't wait to get there. To Santa Claus, Indiana? To Holiday World and Splash have and Safari. Been? I have not. I'm intrigued by it. Ooh. Can't wait to go. Can we broadcast live from there? I think we could. What's it all about? Do we know? Safari and... <laughs> yeah, Splash and Safari. Splash and Safari. So Got it. And what Fun and frivolity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It'll be great. And we thank them for supporting us on our opening day broadcast at Ballpark Village next Thursday. Holiday World, Splash and Safari, and Budweiser. Gang, earlier this hour as we were finishing up with our MLB predictions... 
and whatnot. Dan, what you were saying, actually, yes, what you were projecting for the Yankees, it caught my interest. And I started thinking back to a couple of years ago when the American League East was an entirely different picture. Yes, Tampa Bay has been quite good to great over the past few years. Baltimore had that bevy of draft picks, but you still had the heavy hitters, the big markets, right? We were thinking about the Yankees, the Red Sox, even the Blue Jays. And while the Yankees this year, should they get back Judge? Should Stanton maybe have a bit of a renaissance? And who knows what's going to happen with Garrett Cole? Optimism is a bit higher. But if you look around that division now and think about how the perception, I would say, has changed from a couple of years ago when Toronto was on the ascent, when so many people were excited about Guerrero Jr., Bichette, etc. And now you look at this team, injury-laden, entering the season, not going to have Manoa. Is Manoa even going to be competent this year? You don't have the closer in Romano. Question marks surrounding the Yankees and the Red Sox, too. Even their best player, Devers, Upon reporting to spring training, question why did the front office not do more during the offseason? We're seeing that sea change, but I think it's in an exciting way across baseball, especially in the AL East, because teams like Tampa Bay, like Baltimore, now the stars have arrived in the present and for the future there in Baltimore as well. It's refreshing to me, even though the teams you wouldn't have necessarily anticipated taking center stage, those are the front runners to me to begin this season, honestly. I love that baseball has the Orioles coming back. I mean, they won 101 games last year. They got Jackson Holiday coming. They got a couple other young stars that they like. They have a young nucleus of players. I think that's good for baseball. It's not just the Yankees and the Red Sox every single year. Right. And when you have Gunnar Henderson, you picked as your MVP. Yep. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, Adley Rutschman, who may be the best catcher in baseball right now. And as you said, uh, Jackson Holiday on, on the way. They've got a million middle infielders. They have Stantander at first base, who's very solid. They've got a, a good outfield. And the, their bullpen was diminished last year by yeah. injury and is going to be better this year. They should be right there at 100 wins again. They have a lot of talent, as you guys mentioned. And I wonder when Jackson Holiday will be able to come up because it seems like it's just a matter of time for him. But there's a lot of interesting parts there with the Orioles. And they have new ownership, which seems to be working a lot in their favor because you did have the concerns prior of the comments about the fact that maybe they wouldn't pay some of their young stars. Now that seems to not be an issue or concern as much anymore. Yeah, the, the new ownership came in and, and they said, we will spend money mm -hmm. and we are going to be competitive. And I think... All of a sudden, they go out and get Corbin Burns, and they say, all right. And if you're a fan, you're saying, I'm, I'm going to start believing in what they're saying here. And the, the, the test will be if they lock him up long term. Because now you have this young talent. You, st you still need, and we were talking about this earlier, and Randy brought up the point of if you have veterans, how does it work with young talent? I think it's important when you have that young of a team, you still have to learn from guys that have been around. And Corbin Burns now has been around for a while. He's a number one. He's an ace. And if you pay him, you're sending a message to your fans that, you know what, we want to stay competitive. We're going to do it for the long term here. And Randy, I think that I was just about to pose this question. The degree to which Burns changes the complexion of that rotation of the race because if you think about Baltimore the one thing the one element it has really lacked I would say in recent years you've had some solid lineups but you've drafted a lot of guys who haven't necessarily panned out or really met the expectations you think about Bundy you think about means right now Grayson Rodriguez could he ascend could he evolve into that role but with Cole temporarily being sidelined I'm hard-pressed to think of anybody else atop any other rotation in that league who's better than Corbin Burns. Yeah, he, healthy Garrett Cole. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. But if you get into September and you're tied with the Yankees for first place, do you want Grayson Rodriguez going against Garrett Cole or do you want <laughs> Corbin Burns going, going you against you Garrett Cole? It. It's that number one, number one that we've talked about all year with the Cardinals, all, all off season with the Cardinals. And the Brewers or the Brewers traded that guy to the Orioles. And I really think that's a big deal. And by the way, one of the big things that I wanted the Cardinals to get and they got was a veteran reliever. And the Orioles also got Craig Kimbrell during the offseason. And he will benefit that bullpen greatly. I think the other thing, too, if you're a fan is that you have these young players, you got assets and they're cost controlled is what you do at the trade deadline. You know, that, that's always a litmus test, too, for where an organization is going and saying, OK, we're, we're going to go for it. We're going to give up a young, talented player because we believe we can win now. And that's how you get fans back, too. Yeah. And Randy, as you said, with Bautista being out for the season to 
implement somebody mm -hmm. like a Kimbrel, put him in the back end and give you that certainty, that means yeah. a ton. And they already traded one shortstop in Ortiz so that they could get Corbin Burns, but they have Jordan Westberg too. And at yep. some point, Holiday is going to come up and they're going to be able to move one of those young major league ready or major league experienced infielders for whatever they need. Pretty impressive. With Rock being out today, I'm taking it upon myself to give a little bit of love to the association. On Tuesday, did you guys see that epic double OT game between the Lakers and Bucks by chance? Mm. I did. Yeah. I, well, I saw the I saw from the fourth quarter on when I thought, oh, <laughs> Milwaukee's got this one wrapped up. They were up by 19. You would think, right? Yeah. You would the think. Celtics were up by 30 a couple <laughs> yeah, nights ago. Right. I thought that one would be in the bag. It's a game of runs, right? But in any event, the Lakers prevailed in that contest. A lot of the offensive numbers, guys, were seeing these days we understand they're video game worthy right anthony davis goes for more than 30 and 20 but last night second half of a back-to-back -to, -back to la here's the main point lebron james missed that bucks win with the tender ankle he's been dealing with the lower body ailments throughout this entire season that is par for the course when you're 39 years old but last night second half of a back-to-back -back, davis isn't available he goes for 23, 14, and 12, becomes the second oldest player in NBA history to record a triple-double. And all of that is really immaterial because the crux of the matter here is, have we seen anyone, maybe with the exception, of course, of a Tom Brady, but anyone else striking you right now, playing at this high of a level so deep into one's career, he's 39 going on 40. And I know he's missed 10 games this season. And I know the Lakers are still battling for a play-in spot in the playoffs. Take from that what you will. But it's just remarkable on a night in and night out basis. Did you guys see also part of the, uh, the collection of points last night was an alley-oop. Mm -hmm. And he was probably a foot and a half above the square. I'm serious. Still. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still at his age and dunked it over somebody. Yeah. And I was mm -hmm. like, how is he doing this at 39? It, it's he, amazing. He's not going to slow down. No. He just there, keeps going. By the way, Barry Bonds was pretty good at that age. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> that is fair. Randy True. Johnson was pretty good at that age. Yeah. yeah. Roger Clemens was pretty good at that age. Mm -hmm. Now, they're associated with certain things, but not Randy Johnson. Well, he. Not by everybody. <laughs> You're right, though, because <laughs> the excellence, the proficiency shouldn't be overlooked because maybe there wasn't quite yeah. the level of athleticism in that league. So just right. remarkable yeah. stuff. Though. By the way, multiple texts singing the praises of Holiday World and Sp Splash and Safari. Safari. A lot of St. Louisans have made the trek over there with the kids, and they say it's amazing. Free soft drinks and sunscreen, by the way. So uh, thank you very <laughs> all for texting in and uh, singing the praises, and hopefully you'll be able to make it over there this summer to Holly World. Holly <laughs> Holiday World and Splash and Safari. Holiday World and Splash and Safari. So what is the Safari portion of this Splash and Safari is what I'm intrigued about. And then, two, I love free parking and I love free Wi-Fi. And you said free soft drinks? Yes. Oh, those are... And sunscreen. And uh -huh. sunscreen, yep. Dan. That's all the things that I need other than free snacks. Now, if you throw in the free snacks, I'm going tomorrow. You're there, huh? There to Holiday World and Splash and Safari. But I'm not a big fan of roller coasters, guys. How about you? I like roller coasters. Do I do really? too. Yeah. yeah. I don't. Can't do it, Brooke. Okay. Not. You get it, Brunzi. Oh, yeah. Is it because, like, you've seen there is certain cases where things can go wrong? That's just what goes through my head. That's one element. And then the fact that I become inexplicably sick each and every time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> do you Have get a big motion sickness? burger and then get on that baby? It's only gotten worse with age. For really? Real. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Maybe that's why they don't do the free snacks, Dan. We used to do a summer Probably tour. Not. <laughs> the Fast Lane used to do a summer tour back in the day, and uh, Barnsey and I got out there early and uh, rode a couple of the roller coasters. It was awesome. It was great. You guys make it okay? No oh, problem. Yeah. No problem at all. It was fun. We had our arms in the air and everything. 618 says the safari is just a water park. Oh. Okay. And well, that's I'm, less exciting. I'm hearing incredible theme park. I'm hearing, uh, think of Six Flags in Eureka, but double the size with a little more sophisticated rides and attractions. Uh, it's like Six Flags with more water rides. I've got, I've been, it's a fun place. I don't like roller coasters, so spent most of the time in the water park. Oh, there that's you go. Me. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I'm. Think that it's going to be pretty awesome to go there. I'm, I'm really thankful. The water a lot park, of techs that are very pleased with yeah. this place. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people go, huh? The water park is huge and great and a safari theme. The amusement park around the water park is themed around different holidays. Oh. There you go. That is that is so like nice. Matt and Jackson and Ethan. <laughs>
<laughs> Wrong holidays. <laughs> oh. Sorry. <laughs> Leslie. Sorry. I shouldn't be encouraging this, Dan, should I? But that was pretty good. Be an expensive <laughs> holiday. Those were the holidays. <laughs> it would. <laughs> it would. Uh, so uh, a lot going on today. Enjoy Cardinal baseball this afternoon and blues hockey tonight and, of course, the NCAA tournament. Great job today by our... Producer and audio and video engineer in for Matthew Rocchio, Brad Verbruns. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it, gang. Let's do it again tomorrow after Glass Now gets gouged for between six and eight Gouged. Months. I like it. Uh, glass, now, glass Now gouged. Yes. I think I just used one of my leads. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, Brooke, did you have fun today? Yes. Good. I'm glad. Uh, Daniel, you were awesome as always. Pleasure. Thanks uh, for having me on your show. Uh, this is your show, Dan. I always say your show. We've got a balloon party coming up with T Mac and Ajax, followed by BK and Ferrario from 11 to 2, and then the fast lane from 2 to 6. For all of us, we thank you for tuning in, texting in, and being a part of the show. And until tomorrow morning at 7, have a great Friday Eve, everyone. That's right.